Okay. So anyway, like I was saying, it's a uh, show and tell format where we uh, we either share from our own screen, or if you have previously emailed me, like I said, preferably links to iNaturalist or Mushroom Observer. Um, if not, just attachments directly into your email. Um, and before we get started, I did want to make um, uh, mention um, something about etiquette. Uh, somebody mentioned this to me last week. Um, we want to make sure we're giving everyone ample opportunity to speak about what they're sharing. Um, somebody felt like they were getting spoken over um, as they were trying to share. So, and I'm sure nobody's doing that intentionally. Um, we we're all friends here. Um, because we get excited and start yelling about mushrooms. But I think the proper etiquette would be when people are trying to show off their mushrooms to give them an opportunity to say what they have to say about the mushroom first before we start jumping in with comments and questions and this and that. Um, I know some people have spent a fair amount of time preparing for this, so we want to give them the opportunity to do that. And then also my own personal observation is would be, to, or my thought would be to, to um, make sure you're letting um, you're listening before you start speaking in, in order not to be cutting people off because it's hard. It's kind of hard on Zoom sometimes where we can't really see each other that well. And I think we miss some of the visual cues that people want to say something and it's easy to talk over each other. So just be mindful of that. So where we can jump right into this, um, is there anybody that wants to share from their own screen? We'll start with that and then we can go into the emails. We can share from our own screen. Oh, that'd be great. Please go ahead and uh, get us started. Jason. So, yes, that, this is actually our first meeting, our first interaction with you guys together. So no, well, we, we just joined uh, last week. Awesome. I will I'm sorry. Um, before you start, go ahead and you can get started. Uh, I also wanted to mention um, there's plenty of people here, 23 people, and we're already 10 minutes into this. So um, we really need to stick to like five mushrooms. I know I had a million mushrooms to share this week, but yeah, we got a ton, but we're, we're just, we we're, we brought it down to three. Three. All right, cool. Can you guys, can you guys see our screen? We sure can. All right. So we don't even know what we're looking at anymore uh, right now because we're, you know, we're again, just getting into this, but this is from our, we live uh, in Woodbridge and we have a park across the street from us. So we went across the street and we just took some pictures of some mushrooms that we saw there. Do you have do you have more pictures of the same mushroom? Or um, I don't think we have more of the same, but we have. Okay. Is somebody else somebody else starting in on that one? Do Do you okay. have a proposal for the identification? We, that's what we're, we were trying to look to see, and we couldn't find really what we were looking at. Yeah, I think that's Sterium ostria, or, or actually there's a new American species name for that. Um, but on, on the other hand, at Stokes on, on Sunday, um, there were some tremites, um, versicolor, um, that were very fresh. Um, that look quite a bit like Sterium ostria. So what you need to do with these guys is pluck one of them off the log, turn it upside down and look at the underside very mm -hmm. carefully, perhaps with um, some minimal magnification and see if you can find very small pores. Okay. If, if the surface is smooth, you've got Sterium. If there are very small pores, You've got Trimedes or Trimedes. Not, not really sure what the correct pronunciation is. Okay. I, I think they're Sterium though. These look like Sterium to me. Okay. Yeah, me, me too, but you never know. You can get fooled. So that's, yeah, that's rule number one. Flip them over and see what the bottoms look like, right? Okay. And then we had, uh, I think, another one from that same part. So we had this, it was again, those, those same, um, same types that you were talking about down on the bottom. And then we had this white type that was on the log there as well. Can you blow that picture up a little bit? Let's see what we can do. Okay. 
Uh, I don't know. Is that too big for you? Oh, no, no. I was trying to see a surface. But it's very, ever... um, it was very smooth. What's that slime mold that that's like white and has that kind of sheen to it? It looks kind of like a puffball. Yeah, it almost looks like uh, shaving cream or something. Did you have was it touch? soft or was it? Oh, I'm sorry. Good. No, just did you happen to touch it? Did you touch it? No, we didn't touch it. Yeah, to, to see whether it was soft or about what Dave was going to say, whether it would give or whether it was squidgy. So what would what would the difference be between the two? Well, one would tell you if it was a slime mold, but to me it looks a little bit like a a young polypore of some sort that hasn't really formed any kind of a shape yet. But I, I'm not good with this kind of stuff. If it were a slime mold, um, it would be sticky, and then it got, but it doesn't look quite like it. Um, yeah, there's no insect sticking to it. No. I was thinking of that slime mold called Enteridium, like Operon. Yeah, but there's no debris stuck to it. It's uh, dry. It wouldn't necessarily be true, actually. Is it? Mm -hmm. um, but um, but th this, I, I agree with what Susan said, actually. This looks like a young resupinate polypore um, or, or a crust. Uh, what you need to do with something like this is one of the first things you want to do is similar to what I had suggested about the uh, what, what I thought might be sterium. Only this, in this case, you don't have to turn anything over. You just examine very, very carefully the surface, maybe with some minor magnification. If you mm -hmm. and see if you can find any really small pores. Okay. Um, but, but on a really young, um, if this is a polypore and a really young one, it might be hard to see even any pores. So th this is a tough one. Yeah, you're, you're throwing a tough picture. <laughs> it's first day, you know, we got we to gotta try hard. You there might. you go. Hey, you know, you've, you've got a, a foul ball at least here out of this, you know, because we're not really sure. <laughs> I was just saying, you might, you might need to go back in a few days too and see if it developed into something. We could do that. Yeah, that's sort of what I'm getting at too. Yeah, go back and look again. Sure. Um, and then a couple of weeks ago, we took a, a trip to Maine. Uh, I can't tell you how many mushrooms there were in Maine. It was it was like everywhere you looked, there were there were mushrooms. But we did find this one purplish. I don't know if I can blow this for you. Blow this up for you. Here. With without even seeing the whole mushroom. I believe it's Cortinarius iodes because of those little tiny spots in the coloring. Yeah. But anybody else agrees, but usually you would need to see the underside and the spore bearing surface and the stem. But because of these very distinctive little spots, I'm pretty sure it's Cortinarius iodes. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think you've given us a, a hittable fastball here. Um, <laughs> this. This one looks like we can connect. And um, yeah, the purple color, small, smallish fruit bodies, um, not a real thick uh, stem. And with the yellow spots, it is quaternary sciotes. Uh, that's what it looks like. You might wanna just touch it too and see if it's tacky or slimy. Um, okay. Although it can dry out. So that's, mm -hmm. not, that's, not a, that's not really a character you can depend on. It might become like shiny, sort of dry. Um, anyway, yeah, I agree. Quaternary Sciotes. Okay, great. Igor, Igor just type the name into the chat if you wanted to uh, jot it down and look up more information about it. Okay, thank you. All right, that's what we had. Awesome. So we... Thank you for sharing. Thank you. All right, Byla, you want to go next? Sure. 
Okay. So I guess I'll start with this one here. Phaedo, uh, Phaeotromella frondosa. I think um, <clears throat> it's quite, quite beautiful. Looks like a big head of uh, loose leaf lettuce. <laughs> and it's growing from a dead piece of a beech tree that had come down off of this beech tree that's behind it. And it actually, uh, so yeah, there's the quarter, you get a sense of the size of it. So growing on hardwood, there's another Phaeotromella that grows on conifer. Uh, that's called something else. Um, but this was growing on the hardwood and uh, here you can see it better growing on the log. The, that piece of log, it's just beautiful. It turns out it, from what I read, it um, parasitizes this other mushroom that's over here to the right. So you can see some fruit bodies here, it's a, a sterium. So similar to um, what Jason was just showing. Um, so that's what I know about this one. Marisol had a question. She typed in the chat, why not foliacea? Yeah, that one grows on conifers, foliacea. Brondosa grows on hardwood, and this is definitely on hardwood. I didn't I know that. that. Yeah. No, that was my reading, I think, from um, Mushroom Expert. OK, thanks. Oh, where, where was this at, Lila? Um, here in Morris County, not too far from here. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was, it was funny. I think, I don't know when this was, uh, last week sometime maybe. There wasn't a whole lot out, uh, 25th of August around. Um, but right where I found this, I found like three or four other things. And I walked miles and didn't see very much, but in this one spot, there were a bunch of things. That was kind of funny. Maybe somebody can help me with this one. I think it's a Cortinarius. Had this uh, really cute wrinkled um, cap. And the gills were really uh, serrated underneath. And there were probably eight or 10 of them growing in this one area. A couple of different ages here. Anybody? I, those gills are really unique. Yeah, they sure are. My question is, where is the Cortina? Yeah, well, yeah, it was a difficult thing here. Um, seem to have these dots, but not really seeing a Cortina jump out. Let me see if I have Look on a, a, a less mature one. Ah, yeah, there, there you go. go. Ah. Okay. Okay, and yeah, then this was the older one um, on the gray background as Dorothy likes to see them. And then I did a spore print. Pretty rusty brown. So that's why I think it's a um, Cortinarius. Yeah I, yeah, I think you're right. There's a, a few yellow cap species of Cortinarius. I don't have a name off the top of my head. Um, I'm pretty sure I've posted one or two of these yellow quartz on Mushroom Observer over the years. Um, do you have my email, Lila? I do, Dave, yeah. Yeah, send me an email. I'll look through my observations and see if I can uh, suggest a name. But but court, everybody knows most quartz are really difficult. There's so many of them. But yeah, but it looks like you've got you know enough information here to, because 
the the, the rusty brown uh, uh, sport print color kind of points away from hebaloma and i think that's the only other reasonable alternative here because that would be a lighter brown uh, spore color. And, and, and most Heblomas don't have partial veil, but a few of them do have like a coordinate partial veil. But I, okay. but I think you've got a court here. The, the weird gills might just be uh, an anomaly, a weather-induced anomaly. Do you have a lot of rain where you are there? Um, right, well, actually been dry for a bit. Hmm dry for about a week, I would say, be, before this. So, um, but yeah, there'd been over five, four or five inches back before that. Yeah, if you, fi if you find a species that mentions this sort of um, really weird gill edges, then, then, then you pretty much have it nailed. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, you can go on, if you feel like spending a fair amount of time, you can go on Champignon du Quebec and um, look through all their quaternarius entries, which there are quite a few. Okay. Um, but, you know, send me an email. I'll send you a few names of yellow things I, that I posted. And then I'll just send you the links to the observations and you can compare. Okay, great. Thanks, Dave. Sure. Right, so that was that one. And uh, I think this is Entoloma arbotivum. This was growing on a on a rootstock, so a tree had blown over, and the whole underside where the roots were pulled up was just covered with uh, white mushrooms. And well, and our friend the sterium again there. Um, but some of them looked like this, you know, stem and cap. There's a younger one. Close up of the base. The gills running down um, the stipe, the current. Also had this kind of a, a cinnamon colored, you know, less rusty, more brown, I would say, this spore print. And uh, let's see, I think I have a couple more pictures. Oh, that's just another one of that. Kind of a grayish cap. And here you can see some of the, um, the aborted Antiloma structures. Yeah, I, th I think this last uh, photo nails it. If you have those globs growing right nearby, those are actually aborted armillaria. Um, the Entoloma species parasitizes an armillaria and, um, and turns the armillaria mushrooms into these globs. Um, it's only about 15 or 20 years ago that this was finally figured out. I think Tom Volk figured it out. Um, because before that, it was believed that um, the armillaria was parasitizing the antiloma and turning the antiloma mushrooms into these globs. But it's, it's actually the other way around. Yeah, and, it's fascinating. And, and the spore print color is reported as like salmon pink, but you've got a particularly thick spore print there. So it's going to look a little darker than, than you might expect. OK. Yeah, there was, yeah, Boku uh, spores dropping on that. I probably yes, I mean, you can almost measure the thickness of this print, you know, in like a fraction of a millimeter or something. It's, it's, it's pretty thick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That was near you in New Jersey? Yeah, here in New Jersey. I see the map. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not far from Morristown, between Morristown and Summit. And all right, we'll see if if Igor can help on this one. I don't know.
Boletus, Boletus Separance Group. Separance Group, okay. Yeah, I thought it was it's a group. It's a group because there's more than one species. I think there's three genetically. And uh, we may be overlapping with the southern uh, version of Separans. And uh, the question is, which one is the real one? Mm -hmm. And how far the southern imposter goes up north? Um, uh, Peck described Separans from Albany area, New upstate New York. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just too old to sequence. Um, this is a question that's going to be not easy to answer. But uh, collections like that should be sequenced from different states, and we should sort the two species out and see what their ranges are. But I'm pretty sure that it will they will overlap maybe somewhere around North Carolina or Virginia. But the question is how far the southern species goes up the uh, you know um, uh, up north. Um, yeah. um, other than DNA, I can never really tell them apart. I, I think the, the the southern species is darker and it's more pitted uh, on the cap, you know, really, really wrinkly. Whereas our, ours is usually paler and smoother, not as uh, not as corrugated, but that's that's all I can say. Okay. We need more data, but the separance group is, is, is accurate enough. All right, that's because what I they, thought. Yeah, they do form a, a little clade within, um, a subgroup of Porcini called Alloboletus. That's a term that's been used um, in one of the first phylogenetic papers on the Porcinis. You know, I think I told you there are different lineages in mm -hmm. uh, in Porcini in Boletus sensus stricto, and Alloboletus is basically separans, Nobilis, Gertrudea, and a few Asian taxa. But it's a very small lineage compared to the Porcini sensus stricto, like edulis and arius and uh, uh, subserolescence, uh, pinophilus, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, um, separate group it is. Okay, all right, good. And then this one, these erupted over the weekend. I was away, I came back Monday and a uh, whole bunch of, uh, I would have called this uh, armillaria, but INAP calls it Des armoral area. Um, it's a, um, we have a vicariant of uh, Desarmillaria tabescens, which is a European species in North America, and it's been recently called Desarmillaria sespitosa. So a vicariant is essentially like, uh, like a subspecies. When things get geographically separated, they start special, you know, speciating. So it's like a uh, different species, mm -hmm. but it's essentially the same as the best sense of Europe. Again, okay. it's it's a it's a geographical barrier thing. Um, I, I don't know if, if they can be um, um, if they can mate or not. I have to look up uh, on that particular uh, subject, but the new name suggests that they're not the same. Okay. All right. So. Um... Technically, what should it be called, do you think, right now? Um, I'm going to type in the name. Okay. All right, but they're they're just popping up everywhere. There used to be over here a huge um, soft maple tree that died, I don't know, three, four, four years ago probably now. And these things are still coming up. So I hope they don't kill the, uh, the huge pin oak that is out of the frame to the right. But these are in the yard. Now, and, sorry, I only, I only ever saw it with maple, either standing or gone, uh, ah. when I lived in New Jersey. Okay. I never saw it with oak. All right. So I'm hoping yeah. it's working on the, the, the roots of that now deceased maple. Yeah. yeah. D ditto for Pennsylvania. I find it following the roots of old maple trees. <laughs> As far as I know, uh, the Sarmillaria is not as parasitic as uh, other uh, honey mushrooms that form rhizomorphs. The Bessens does not form rhizomorphs, so it doesn't travel under the ground and kill off oaks one by one. Okay. Mm, but, you know, spore transfer uh, can produce another colony, and maybe it is parasitic enough to kill oaks, but not in the same way as um, 
uh, as the uh, rhizomoforming armillarias or honey mushrooms. All right, well, that's encouraging. I'd like to keep that tree alive if we can. Um, so Dave, this is the one that, is this uh, one of the ones that you say to parboil before cooking? I would, I would parboil all uh, types of honey mushrooms. Mm -hmm. um, the, the quality, the edibility qualities are not diminished. Um, and you still cook them for a long time after you parboil them as well. Mm -hmm. um, at least with armillaria, uh, there seems to be some sort of indigestible uh, substance in them that has um, pro a more profound effect on some people than others. And uh, I mean, I, I've heard stories around here of people just like eating, eating single specimens raw, uh, which I would never do. But yeah. apparently it's a highly variable reaction amongst people to something that is in at least armillaria. And I would think that desarmillaria is probably similar enough to armillaria, uh, you know, to mandate the same uh, suggestion. Um, but I, I parboil all my armillaria and all my desarmillaria. How long when you parboil? Uh, you know, I have this Russian friend who used to say, until they start to sink, you know, boil them, nice rolling boil until they start to sink. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that usually is after maybe three to five minutes or so. And that's generally what I, what I do. And then I drain them really well. I don't, I don't use the liquid. Right. You know, I, I let the liquid go. And, um, and, and by the way, they freeze very well after they're parboiled. They freeze very well and keep for a long time. If you have a non-frost free freezer, you can keep them for years. Okay. All right, cool. All right super. Well, thanks. All right. Thanks, thank uh, you. Yep, thank you. All right, Mintari, you want to go and then, um, then I'm going to move into the emails. Don't forget uh, Lauren, Lauren's got one. Lauren, Lauren came before Lila actually. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see Lauren. Lauren was the first one. <laughs> oh, sorry, Lauren, I didn't mean to skip you out. Okay, let's do Lauren. And inventory, and then we'll go to the emails. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thanks, ladies. That was nice of you. <laughs> Sorry, Lauren. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Mike found this yesterday in Morris County. What is it? It's got pores. Tilopolis Baluey. Tilopolis what? Baluei. Baluei. I'm I'm typing it in. <laughs> yeah, good, good idea, Igor. That first view just looked kind of weird with those like stretched out pores. Yeah, weird, um, right? But that's what it is. Yeah, I agree. As soon as you said it, it was like, yeah, that's what it is. So this is, um, what's the story behind these things? Because like, you know, we've never found lobster mushrooms before, and I know that they would have gills, but um, it's so lobster-ish looking. <laughs> like, is this normal for them? Well, it's probably some kind of deformity, but uh, in a genus that's full of boring brown Tilopolis, this is always a welcome find if, you, if you're into orange stuff. Yeah. And the color, the color is normal. That's okay. Cap color is normal. Yeah. Stipe color varies. Sometimes it's got some orange on it, sometimes it's whitish. But yeah, it's so an the, orange mushroom. So the shape is normally like a normal Tilopolis. You're just saying that the shape is off here. Yeah, it's, it's deformed. It's just weird looking. I'm not sure what's going on. A degenerate. Okay. But just as edible probably as the others. Unless it's bitter, of course. Yeah, some, some reports say it's occasionally bitter. Really? Yeah. Everyone I, I ever find, I see this a lot in Philadelphia and they're always really bitter. You guys actually find ones that are not? Because I read that, that there are supposed to be some that are not, but I've never... They always seem better to me. Some Baluey collections we occasionally find in the Pine Barrens, which could be different species, um, they fade quickly to brown and they don't smell so well in age. They smell like a musty cellar. Not very appetizing. Dave, have you ever eaten this thing? Um, you know, I'd have to look in my through my records. I mean, maybe like 35 years ago. I don't know. I, I don't find it very often. 
But honestly, I, mm-hmm. I don't remember offhand ever trying to eat this. I think I may have tasted it once, you know, just like nibbled and it wasn't very good. So maybe I backed off. <laughs> Do I remember that it's an oak associate? All types of things. Uh, probably oak. Yeah, probably mainly oak. I, I don't know. I don't find it very often. I'm sorry. Igor, you probably Well, well the, the normal looking thing that uh, I find in the Sturgis woods, yeah, it's oak. But the one in the Pine Barrens, um, I don't know. It's a um, it's a toss up. Like I said, I, I want to find this thing again and then get it sequenced because I have a, I'm suspecting, I'm suspicious that there could be two species involved okay. that are, you know, have two ecological niches. Maybe I'm wrong. As you know, I'm a splitter. That's a problem. Or maybe it's a solution. All right. Then the other thing I want to show. Oh, where did it go, Mike? <laughs> Hold on a second. What do I close out of? Give me a second. All right, so I just wanted to show this because um, I learned this at the Stokes foray, thanks to Igor. Um, I thought this was really neat. Apparently, this is a bolete, <laughs> um, even though there's no stipe. Um, and as you can see, the gill, or well, they're not gills, but it looks like wavy gills. Um, but Pseudomerilius curtisii, right? Pseudomerilius curtisii. Yes. A quick, a uh, small correction. It's not a true bolete. It's in the. It's part of the boletalis, I think, but it's not a boletache because it's, oh, okay. a, it's a decomposer. It's a wood, wood welling thing and it's not mycorrhizal. But I have, the, I have to look uh, up where actually it, it falls in, in, the, um, in the phylogeny. Is it close to uh, Tepanella? I think it'll be close to Tepanella. That would be my guess. Go ahead, yeah, there, There's a, a, a Paxalis or a Tapanella. I'm not sure it may have been moved from Paxalis to Tapanella. It's kind of similar. I forget the um, species name. It also grows on wood and it doesn't have a stock. Panioides? Uh, what is it? Panioides. Yeah, Panioides, right. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't look exactly like this, but it's sort of, it, it can be confused with this one. Igor? Yes, very Did so. you say that this is mycorrhiza? No, it's not. It's oh, a, it's, it's, oh it's a, I was going to. Like I said, it's, about it's a that. decomposer. It's a decomposer because yeah. it's a decomposer. It's not part of the boletache, so it's not a bolete oh. in the tree sense. On conifers, but, yeah. Um, it's always on conifer. I don't know. Uh, I always find it in conifers. Lauren and I found it on our way back to the ID tables, and it was growing on a stump, but I didn't pay attention to what stump it was, so I cannot tell you. Oh, I always find it in, uh, no, no. I have found it in several areas, always on white pine, no other wood. It's possible because white pine was in the area, you know, so. I mean, I mean, as a conifer, no, exactly only white pine, who knows? Conifer. It, it could I mean. have been, it could have been a hemlock too, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I meant. Uh-huh. Uh, I had this a couple of weeks ago, a better looking one than this, and it was on a white pine stump. Uh, did somebody save this? It's supposed to be a good dyer, but I've never had enough of it to try. There was quite a bit of it on that one stump that we saw. I thought Maricel took something, some of that with her. Did you, Maricel? I did. I'm, I'm getting the spore print. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, well, that's it for me. Cool. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. All right, now it's been very Okay, let me share. You see it? Yeah, you're like your screen split though. You might wanna, there you go. So this, um, I found this right here in Bergen County, Thanofly. Um, Igor can correct me. 
this should be, oh, I assume, their baby king bullet. No. No? No. No. What are they? It's a new Boletus, and I just gave it a provisional name a couple of months ago. It's a uh, it's a species I recognize very well in the woods. It might have been published in old literature, but I cannot find a match anywhere. So uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a red poured blueing bolete, so it cannot be a porcini. Oh, these I, are not porcini. No, the, oh. the pores look. I mean, it's a it's a long shot view. From where I'm looking here on the, my monitor, but it looks like the pores are yellow. Well, the cap color is unmistakable. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's a mixture of dark brown, chocolate brown, um, and the greenish brown, olive brown, as well as oh. red and yellow. So uh, I think they can start off as yellow. I, I think I well, I was going to add that Neo yeah. species sometimes. When they're very young, the poor surface will be yellow. I, I, I know I've seen it with the chameleon. So here's the name. I called it Neobaletus varietatibus. I think I might, might have misspelled it here. Let me repeat that. Varietatibus. Um, varietatibus in Latin means multicolored. And it refers to the fact that the color of the cap is like all over the place. So you have different shades of everything. And to that, you add the stipe, which is yellow and red, and that varies too. So it's a, it's a, it's a big palette of colors, very messy. And a um, right? Uh, no, <laughs> well, I don't know. I, 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 I wouldn't eat that thing, you know. You I, <laughs> no, no, I don't eat red pork mushrooms, bullets. Oh. Okay. It it might be edible, but uh, I would not be the first one to try it. If you want to try it, be my guest. Oh, <laughs> but, I, well. but I, I'm an, I'm not endorsing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, this. What is this? I don't know what this is. I naturalist doesn't you know tell me what this is. It's Do you have a fresher collection of this? Yeah, it's old. These are old. I found them old like this. So yeah, there's I'm no sorry, I don't have the young ones. Huh? There's no distinctive characters when they get old like this. For oh, our... I see. I'm sorry. Although okay. it does look like it's a fairly black, almost spore print. But yeah, you can see the spore print on the one cap there. Um, and and they don't appear to be deliquescing at all, or 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 decomposing in a way that a deliquescent mushroom would. So I, a long shot guess I would put forth as maybe a species of Lacry Maria. Yeah, it kind of has that look. Yeah, okay, it's too old. Next time I'll, I'll watch and um, take a picture of the young ones. Because of the cespitose growth, do you think this is just an old uh, Desermularia cespitosa? Well, it looks like there's black spores, and the and the gills are really black on on the one that's upturned. So, I, I yeah, I don't I don't see the gills getting quite that dark with uh, any kind of armillary or desarmillary. They get like reddish brown. Can we and zoom in? Can we up. zoom in on the picture? I think it's just decomposition because when de when they decompose, they just get uh, very dark. Well, okay, you know what? When seeing it in close up, I can believe. You know what, Igor? I'm 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 now in your camp. I think you're right. I think that's what this is. Yeah. And and you know what? It's not a desarmillary. It's an armillary. Look, there's a there's a ring on one of them. The one that's the, being this, hidden now on the bottom. Move, the small move. one. This yeah, one. That yeah. looks like. Oh, oh, that's not a ring. I'm that's, sorry. That's not, that's a, not ring. a ring. No. That's just no. That's just stem that's a. Um, Fluffy. Yeah, it's just a tearing apart. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you know what? I think you're right. Oh wait, look at the little one in the middle. Does that have a ring? That little one right in the, the middle left, sort of. This? Yeah, right there. Is that a ring there? Well, that's what I was looking at. I thought it was just like, you know, splitting of the stem because you yeah. see the same thing like on the bottom of it, like these projections. All the spikes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Desarmillary sort of makes most sense here. But, but you, yeah, it's hard to get any kind of confident consensus on something like this. But anyway, yeah, I can see that. I, I don't think this is... Um, 
black memory maria well, I think well, also look at the gills uh on the one that's uh, lying down uh uh you know stipe up you know the edge of the gills actually is of the color of the best and so the darker ones are just decomposition they're just rotting away yeah yeah you can i as soon as it was blown up i saw that the the margin there's like a few millimeters along the margin where the gills haven't turned and and that would probably not be true of a dark spored mushroom they wouldn't stay that the light like that just around the margin so that's probably just decomposition from the middle outward yeah okay i guess next time when it's old i would not bother to take pictures i think my time is up uh, it's so okay to take pictures take pictures of whatever you want you know if, oh. i mean if we can't figure it out that's you know that that sort of stuff happens yeah. okay can I share one more, please? Sure. This one here. Are these all two? The the white color is amazing, like 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 snow color. Is that on the ground? It's on they're on the ground. There's a lot of oak trees and pine trees. Crepidotus maybe growing on from that, you know, buried wood or something? Eh, it's stock too thick. Well, there's no stock. There's no stock yeah, at all. The one here. on the upper right, if you move the photo over, the one on the upper right looks like it's not a stock is just broken off, Dave. There's no stock there. Yeah, I think that's a stock that was broken off there, actually. No, it's it's a point of it's a point of attachment to the substrate. That's why it's white in there. There's no oh, gills. Okay. Yeah, that might be. Yeah, crepidotus maybe. Look at the at the kidney fan shape, the one in the middle. You know, there's clearly no stalk. There actually, there's like a um, almost like a space there in the center. Yeah, I didn't see stalk, so they're like you know very close to the ground. I'm not saying it's crepidotus, but it's one of those things that are stalkless and just grows in these uh, layers of you know, and it's also very white. So who knows what this is? Brown spore print probably. Oh well, may, may, maybe. Yeah, I think that's up in the air, really, because the gills might just have darkened because they're dried out. But crepidotus, yeah, crepidotus makes sense. They're kind of they're kind of robust and fleshy for crepidotus. Um, I don't see any jagged gill edges. Oh wait, no, upper upper middle. Look at some of those gills are jagged. You can Mintari. See yeah, I'm sorry. Maybe Lentinellus. How big was this? Uh, it's probably about one and a half inches, like this from here to here. Okay. Oh, that's all. Yeah, one they, and a half inches big. from from where? From, could you do from, that again? From here to here. Like one and a half. Oh, those here. are pretty small. Yeah, they're pretty small. Hmm. What about Crepidotus mollis? No, that one has scales on the caps, I believe. Oh. I think. I, I, I have to double check. I mean, if you get into Crepidotus, there's, I don't know, didn't, didn't like, um, who put that monograph out? Smith, I think. And that is him, Mushroom Observer. I said there were yeah. several hundred species in that monograph. Yeah, it's Crepidotus is really hard, but take a spore print. If you get a brown spore print, then it's almost certainly crepidotus. If you get a pale spore print, so you should take spore print on two on both black and white non-absorbent surfaces, so you can see what 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 the color is. Um, if so, if it's like a white spore print, it's not crepidotus, uh, something uh -huh. else. But if it's brown spore print, it's, it's almost certainly crepidotus. Yeah, I have to go back to my friend's house. This was, um, you know, in his backyard. Um, I did not, you know, bring them home. But next time when I go there, um, so I think um, I should stop because um, to give people a chance to show and tell. Thank you. All right, thanks, Mentari. I'm going to share my screen. I'm gonna start going through these ones that were emailed to me earlier today. I believe T 
Steve, I think, was the first one to email me. Okay, yeah, that was just a few hours ago, but yeah, go yeah, ahead. Well, I, I didn't send the announcement until this morning, so. Oh, okay. Well, I've got a few really interesting things. I'm going to try to go fast. Maybe we can look at all of them if I go fast. Uh, let's um, just do, let's just pick five. And if we have time, we'll come back because there's like five or six more people too. Um, <laughs> okay, skip the first one then. Okay. So this was from Stokes. I didn't know this species. I thought maybe it was Cisto agarigus. That turned out to be wrong. This guy, Chris Cassidy, he's very good with these really small things. He, um, he proposed this um, melanophyllum um, hema, oh boy, hematospermum. <laughs> um, I never heard of it before, but I looked it up on um, Champignon du Quebec, and and it's like it's a slam dunk once you know once you know what it is. I mean, this is what it is, and you can see there's like three votes. Um, well, I think Chris's vote still might be at promising because he's the one who proposed it. So he was being a little bit conservative, but it, it's what it is. It's that species. Really small. The bigger cap is like a centimeter wide, maybe. I think these were probably on wood. They were collected at Stokes. A really good find, uh, nicely collected. And, um, and I got some pictures and made a mushroom observer post. And within like a half an hour, I had this proposal from Chris Cassidy. He was, he's really good with these little things. Steve, are these the ones that Steph found? I, you know, I'm not sure who found them. I get confused with who, there's so many mushrooms, you know, I get confused with who found what, but, but I think so. Okay. Yeah, so there's some really distinctive features that the, the material hanging along the end, edges of the caps, um, the, the like reddish gills, the gills are free. Um, there's a lot of really good, strong characters in these mushrooms and, um, and it all checks out with this species. Okay, that's that one. So that was a Stokes find. Can I ask a quick question about this one, Dave? Yeah, yeah sure. Did they have a partial veil? Because I noticed that the cap edges were appendiculate. Yeah, I think they probably do. You know what? I, I didn't even bother to check that in, because there was, because none of these exhibited any obvious partial veil. So I just read some, some just parts of the description on Champignon du Quebec and looked at the pictures. And I, if you look, you'll see it's like, okay. there's nothing else that looks like this really. Okay, thanks, Dave. Sure. Okay. Oh, the interesting one? Yeah, go to the interesting one. Yeah, that's what is that anyway? I forgot. Let's see. I know it's interesting. <laughs> oh, Trichloma fulvum is a white, creamy white gilled mushroom. And um, we were all like trying to figure this thing out. Um, it looks like a trichloma, but the gills were yellow. And the only trichilomas that I know that have distinctly yellow gills are um, subludium, um, equestre, and sometimes odorum has like a little bit of a yellowish tint. The, the pictures do not do justice to how vividly yellow these gills were. Now, other than the gills, these mushrooms look like trichiloma fulvum, which is- Dave, which, yes. I saved this collection, I dried it. Yeah, well, it's according to Champignon du Quebec, this is very rare. And I confirmed that the gills were uh, yellow. And when, when you cut them, when you slice the mushroom in half, the flesh was also pale yellow. And, oh, okay. Uh, did, did you look on the, the, the description on Champignon du Quebec? They no, I, 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 I was still going with the assumption because I photographed the, or actually took the name tag because we thought it was some kind of Chiclomopsis. Well, we, I thought it was trichiloma to begin with, but we couldn't come up with any kind, any decent trichiloma proposal. So we kind of switched over to trichilomopsis. And then there was a species name that I had forgotten. And I looked it up and it's trichilomopsis. I think it's flamens or something like that. Um, but I looked, I found it and it's not this. Okay. It's not this. And, and um, so, so yeah, this is this weird trichiloma. It looks exactly like fulvum. And and Champignon du Quebec is calling it some weird name that 
MO wouldn't let, wouldn't allow me to post. Trichoma of fulvum SS. Stensa um, stricto, that is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know what that meant. Um, and it's in it's in the notes. I put it in the notes, and I put the link in the notes to, to Champignon du Quebec, so you can look. Yes, I, I, I photographed the collection. Unfortunately, I didn't work on these till the next day, so I, I kept them in a, a paper bag in my fridge overnight, and they preserved pretty well. I can also say that the caps were sticky. Uh, that's why you see debris clinging to the surface of the caps. Oh, and they're sticky to begin with because they were, they were kind of slick and shiny when we were examining them because they were dried they, they, out. They were definitely probably, sticky. Probably putting them back in the refrigerator, they, you know, the, the caps rehydrated a little bit in higher humidity and maybe got a little bit sticky. Actually, it's lower humidity in the refrigerator. It, it dehydrates stuff. Yeah, well, when you drop the temperature, though, the um, the organism itself will become uh, will 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 condense moisture um, because the temperature of it drops. May I ask a question? Is that color fairly true on the uh, rest of the mushroom, other than the gills? No, Pretty they were much, more. Yeah. They were more brown than red. The caps more. Uh, I should say the mushrooms. They looked more brown to me than red, right. and the gills were yellower. So there's a distortion of color in in the in these images. Okay. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit too much red, I'd say. I agree with that. They were brown, more or less. They looked like fulvin. If you know what fulvin looks like, they look just like fulvin. No, I don't. Oh, okay. It's a yeah, it's an it's a hardwood species, I believe, okay. or well, or maybe not. It might be a pine species, but anyway, um, and they stain. There were like brown stains here and there on the gills, and um, I mean, if you look, I mean. There it, seems to be nothing else that even remotely seems to fit. And, so and this the, is and, this is Trichoma fulvum, you said. Trichoma fulvum S S, and then and then they something that starts with O, capital O. I, I uh, forget. Where did it's you get the, the name? Notes. It's in the notes. Let's see. What, let's see that. Uh, Sen, okay, census. Of Rebo. Of Rebo, yeah. Census. S -S -S of Rebo. Of Rebo. Okay, so Aribo actually studied uh, tricholoma in the 80s and 90s, I think. Oh, that's, and, oh, that's the author. Yes. And, I'm uh, sorry, that's the author. Yeah, oh. and B Bissett's referred to him a lot in, in their book uh, on the tricholoma of North America. So this is just tricholoma fulvum that has yellow. But, but Champignon du Quebec said it's rare. And tricholoma fulvum in general is not rare. Oh, maybe it's maybe it's her in Quebec, up north. Yeah, I don't know, but it's it's a pretty common species. Well, here's the thing: we have a collection. You know, when but, I but, tried it, it was still in decent shape. We're going to get it sequenced, and uh, yeah. we'll see what it is. Well, anyway, um, Champignon du Quebec also has an entry that's just called regular old Triculoma fulvum with no S S of Rebo. So they have there's two entries called Trichoma fulvum. I tried to um, post Trichoma fulvum group. Um, Mo didn't let me do that either, so I just I just like I just posted fulvum and I put a lot of uh, stuff in the explanation. It's an interesting one though. All right. So what's next? Um, go to the slime mold, I guess. Maybe Virginia can tell us what this is. So I'm just guessing here, mix on my seats. I think probably that applies. So this is what it looks like in the palm of your hand, but then the next pictures show that uh, more of a zoomed in. Um, our, our, it's our Syria. Uh -huh. Probably cinerea, that's the common one, is kind of pale, whitish or grayish. Oh, okay. That's one All of right. the most common ones ever. <laughs> do you want to go on there and, and propose that, or, or, or should I do it? I mean, you can do it if you want. Um, you mean on your... Um... On MO, because it's on MO. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, oh, if... good. Thank yeah. you. All right. Excellent. Okay. I didn't do any micro or anything. I just took pictures at, at the site. Uh, the triple um, exclamation point. Um, so, 
So some sort of bluing psilocybe, I, I, but nobody is all that confident about what it is. Jason Polk proposed psilocybe just as a genus. Um, he usually only proposes at promising. So he's, he's, he always likes to um, submit uh, proposals with high confidence. Uh, but this thing was bluing all over the stock, the cap, the gills. But so you would think immediately psilocybe, say, rule of peace, because that's the small bluing psilocybe that grows in, in the Northeast in late summer. Um, but look at these gills, these gills that they're completely white. So the Dave, only thing that makes Dave, sense to me. Um, yes, I took it home. And you I got it. You should try it out. This 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 might be a a, a real one, almost a one of a kind. The one, it. the one thing that makes sense to me is, is is if there aren't any spores in it, it might be you know a. Oh, oh, did you get spores? Uh, I I I the only I couldn't put. They did not drop spores, but I I smashed it. And I got some, uh, just a few spores, and it seemed to be white. Oh, that's crazy. Then, I that mean, that would not be philosophy. No, it would be a mycena, maybe. Yeah, well, that was one of my guesses, mycena. It doesn't have free gills. The gills are attached, so it's not pluteus. Um, a, a really strange mushroom. As soon as I saw it, I wanted to take some pictures of it. Um, so no, nobody knows what it is so far. My best guess had been that this was a psilocybe that was, this was a sterile fruit body that wasn't producing any spores for some reason. So, so the gills never got dark. But um, I, honestly, I don't know. If you found some little, some little, or if you found some spores and they were white, well, that just makes it even more interesting, really. <laughs> We'll have to. It's dry. It's it's dried, and 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 Eagle can uh, do the um, get the DNA. We'll yeah, see. that one should be sequenced. Let's see what it is, because it's a very strange um, entity. Well, in a horror movie, this would probably be the time when everyone discovers, oh, it's a new kind of mold or fungus that affects other fungus, completely unbalancing the ecosystem, and that's what the bluing is. But that's just a high hypothetical <laughs> well if my living room starts filling up with them in a few weeks then then i, I will congratulate you on this far-fetched hypothesis that that would then then be uh, highly supported <laughs> but um, you won't have um, to spend any effort for halloween making a costume you could just now, go honestly, down the street though, just to to comment a little further on this um, there is a species of psilocybe that grows in the Northeast in the spring, mainly, that's called psilocybe ovoidio cystidiata. And this species was not even documented until 2003. It's not even in, um, what's his name? Uh, who's the um, fungi perfecti guy? Um, oh, uh, Stamets. Stamets. Stamets has a book on psilocybe of the world. It's not even in there. So, but this one, no, nobody knows what it is yet. You know, we have to, we, we should get that sequence if possible. Okay, so I'm sorry, we can move on. I can always just discuss the today's mystery bully with you, Eagle you, later you, on. You can get one more. One more, okay, go yeah. to the mystery bully then. Today's mystery, this was not from New Jersey. This was not from Stokes. It was from a place near where I live, um, Moon Lake. And, in the presence of many, 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 um, what I think are probably Boletus vermiculosoides and also Lanmeo uh, uh, pseudosensibilis, uh, but it doesn't really look like either one to me. So this one's yeah, kind of strange. That's, that's the same thing that uh, Pre uh, Mintari Preston showed. It's this uh, Neoboletus varietatibus numprov. Oh, it is. Oh, yes. okay. So it's got it's got a little band of reticulation on the upper stipe. Yes, it can be actually much more articulated than that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a fairly prominent, but it's you know it's not a real wide band. Maybe you know five or six millimeters. One of the yeah. pictures shows it. 
So it's that it's that crazy multicolored neobelitis. Correct. And when it gets older, the the browns and the greens disappear. You're just left with red, red and yellow. Okay. So so mystery solved. All mystery right. Solved. So something I never found before, <laughs> and yep. I found it yesterday. So, so you can you can you can propose that name. Um, you know what? Let me just give me the first few letters. Is all it? It's neobelitis. Um, v A R I. I'm sorry. Uh, what's the first letter? V as in Victor. V. Okay. V A R I. That's that's good enough. I can get it from there. I'm, Google Google will take me the rest of the way. Okay. Thanks. But I thought you said it's unpublished. Yeah, it's still in the uh, chat, Dave. If you just scroll up in the chat uh, a little it'll, bit, it'll be a, it'll be online. There's. There's it, the name has has been posted online. It's no, it's it's on MO. Yeah, it's on MO, MO, so it'll show up. I'll yeah. just go to MO and look for it. I'm right. sorry, yeah, bet MO better than Google. Right. Okay, thanks. All right, that's all that all we need to look at from awesome. mine. We can move on. Thanks. All right, thanks, Dave. All right, here are mine for this week. Okay, so the first one, this was in Philadelphia. This is uh, what I believe to be Sterium subtomatosum, which is one of the former uh, Austrias, you know, Sterium Austrias. So this is the one with the yellow hymenium and they uh, so it had this wavy crust or wavy, wavy edges to it. It's one of the tells of it and uh, matted hairs that wear away in bands. So some of these steriums, the hairs wear away, the hairs on the top, they wear away from the front edge right rapidly and expose the uh, context underneath, but some of them come away in bands. So I saw a lot of this this weekend. I kind of think this is what the one that Jason was showing first. It kind of had that look to it, the bands and the wavy edges to it. And these are not new names. These are names that were published like in the early 20th century and they got all lumped together in, um, into Austria and then since has been getting split back up. So you see these are really fresh. But that white edge yellows like really quickly when just from touching it. So, so the yellow is bruising? The yellow is bruising. You see, look there, there, there it is before I touched it. And then uh -huh. okay. just brushing my hand over it, it turns yellow, but that, that yellow fades to red fairly quickly. Within a few minutes, it becomes a red color. But for a few minutes, it's a very distinct yellow. So that's the cap surface. You see the, the hairs on it, how it's wearing away in those bands. So that brown stuff is the context that's underneath. Another photograph of the bands. And this is the hymenium, the bottom, so you can see it's smooth. And there's our knife marks, where I just kind of scored it with a knife, and the other bit of yellow was just my finger dragging across it. And then just another shot of the hymenium with the, the yellow staining. That's Sterium subtomatosum. If there's a, um, there's a really good page that Patrick Leacock wrote on his, um, was it the Chicago Field Museum's website? If you just kind of like look up Patrick Leacock Sterium stuff, um, if I can, that's how I usually end up finding it. And he does a pretty good detailed analysis of all the Steriums in uh, the Midwest and Eastern North America. All right, my next one. Are these guys? Exudoporus frostii. Beautiful. Yeah, there are tons of them on this lake that I was at the other day. So this was in Bucks County, just north of Philadelphia. The wrong genus name. Is it a Butyrobolitis? Yes. Yeah. It's an oddball, but apparently it is. I'm sorry? I said it's an oddball, but apparently it is a butyri boletus. Yeah, I've been hearing that. I, I know it's not caught up. 
to that. But. Does anybody like these? They have like a weird sour flavor to them, like real lemony. Haven't haven't tried them. I've eaten them a couple of times. I feel like um, I think I made a fish sauce with, or a butter sauce with them. Put over fish one time. That was kind of neat. But I mean, they're I've just... never found them up here. No? They're on my bucket list. Yeah, they're really. They're, I mean, they're stunning to find. So these were all really small cats. Look at this. That like, is breathtaking. Look at that. Like it's I guess almost it's, like a stink cap in its stem formation. I guess this is really heavy reticulation. Luke, oak trees? Yeah, those are all like oak and beech trees in the area. I apologize. I meant stink horn. That was my fault. <laughs> right. Right, so exuporous, although, as Igor has mentioned, it's transferred to butyro boletus now. And another butyro boletus that I found right next to him, like literally within a foot or two, is this one, which Igor suggested bilier. The first, first you would think rubra brunius, it's not Calabolitis? It's not Rubrobrunius and it's not Calabolitis. It's definitely Petri Boletus Billier, named after Ernst Boff's wife, whose first name was Billy. And it's a species found in coastal plain uh, from Connecticut down to Louisiana, but I've never seen it so far inland as Bucks County. Uh, Brunius is a Helmuck associate, so that's out. Yes, that's definitely out. Yeah, Brunius has a brown, reddish brown cap also. Yeah, did you save this, Luke? Because uh, Michael Flora um, wants it as a, a rare fungus challenge. I do have it still in my refrigerator. I'm down a, mm -hmm. uh, I'm down a dehydrator right now. I might be drying it on top of a lizard cage with a heat lamp. <laughs> Please dry it because it's an important collection. Well, do. Yeah, may maybe slice it up kind of thinly so it dries a little faster. In, in low heat. Gorgeous. Yeah, look at that reticulation on it. That is one of the most beautiful stems I've seen. I guess I guess now that you mentioned that, since you mentioned that, Igor, you know, that last one that we're looking at, Frosty Eye, and this one, the reticulation on the stipe is pretty, uh, there's a similarity how deep they are. Do the other ones in this genus, do they have a similar one? I know we find that other one. Uh, was that Rony, Rogio Porius? Which one? Is it Rogio Porius? Um, Rogio Porius, yeah, but that one has a purple cap and it, it looks more like a uh, typical butter bullet with. Um, um, well, the, the, one, the one that's related to Frosty Eye is uh, Florida. Flor Flor Danus, that's in Florida, that's in the south. And I think Floridanus and Frosty Eye are these oddball butyri boleti with red pores. All the other butter bullets have butter yellow pores. I'm typing in the name, I have to check the spelling of uh, Billy. <laughs> it's, it's uh, when you Latinize that, it's a little bit funny in the ending. Yeah. Okay, my fourth one is, oh, this one, this uh, was an ask. I don't have a, any kind of idea on this. I just dug my uh, my uh, the Bissette's book out this afternoon, but I didn't really have a chance to look at it. I was flipping logs over and like half buried in the soil under this log was this thing, which I wasn't even sure if it was a fungus at first. I picked it up and I gave it a squeeze and it snapped in half or into like three pieces. Um, but it was, you know, it, you couldn't really, you couldn't say what else it would be besides a piece of some sort of fungus. Some sort of hypogeous fungus, like a truffle-like thing. So you see like the folds in it. 
was this growing on the wood? There, this was growing in the soil underneath of a piece of wood. So it was like subterranean. I lifted up the wood, it was like super well decayed and it was half submerged. I just set it on a piece of wood to uh, photograph it. So, so this this is not uh, some weird uh, Ductifera Poluhuana or something like that. No, no, no nope. This is an ASCO. So here, okay. are, here are some of the spores, super reticulate. Whoa. There's the ASCO with these uh, really incredibly uh, spinous spores. Yeah, big spines. Big. These things were wow. big. They were like 30, 30 microns across the, the spores themselves. Well, oh, the spores were 30 microns. So those those spines are like 10 microns then, or eight microns yeah. or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, wow. they're, they're big. It's like a cuckoo. Yeah, you should, you know, you should be able to run into some sort of ID then just based on that. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Besides book has a bunch of these looking, bunch of these things, mostly from the West Coast, but I need to go through them. I just, like, I just cracked the book this afternoon. Do, do they have the, the same kind of like extreme spore morphology? I, I don't know. I, um, again, I didn't really have a chance to look at it too deeply. Yeah, I got a nice picture there of the spores. There's just a bunch of these things in there, in their keys. So there's some stuff to look at. Look. Yes. And only five spores per ascus. Yeah, you know, I was noticing so that. Weird. Yeah, some of them had like three or four, but that's pretty consistent in that number, isn't it? And I was, yeah. I was really trying to hone in to see if I was just my depth of field was off, but mm. you, you yeah, see, could there be could there be one hidden or or more than one hidden behind those? Right, but um, yeah, as Marisol was saying, I not a single doesn't one, look like it really. Not, not a single one, and there was a ton of acid. I was looking at a bunch of them. Not a single one had more than what I could see as five. Huh. So non-dextranoid or non-amyloid, I should say. So, so anyway, like, I don't have anything besides ASCO on that. <laughs> but hopefully I'll come to Post it on ASCO Mycete uh, Fungi or ASCO France. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm going to dig into this one a little bit more. I, I saved this one, too. So. Okay, my last one, I did this as a Facebook post because it's actually two different INAT posts. That I because uh, I took the photographs. Um, I still share very well this way actually. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip this one. I will share this next week. This is not showing up the way I want it to show up on here because I took a sequence of photographs of Anonotus glomeratus growing. Um, I was trying to do it as a sequence, and but I'm gonna I'm gonna pass next. I don't want to take up the time with it. So I'm gonna come out of those are my observations. We'll look at the Anonotus next week. Okay, Marisol, you are. So next. you think that's an I I I know uh, I notice I don't notice. I didn't notice, yes. Yeah, I think maybe Hispidus or something close to that. No, not Hispidus. Gosh. Now, I'll show it to you guys next week. It's Glomeratus. It's a pretty good observation, but I just don't have it presented well. So I'll wait. All right. I'll wait to do it next week because uh, I, want, I want you to see the sequence of it in a better order. Okay. Maricel, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so here's your first one. Okay, this one is called Gymnopus androsaceus. Uh, it's very small. It grows on pine needles. And I look with the lens and it burst through the, through the needle. You can see that there probably. It has very spaced gills. And um, the, the stipe is kind of a smooth. And it's kind of pinkish on the cap. My, my photo of the cap didn't come too good. It's pretty bad. Maybe the one on the left is a little better. Yeah. And the particular thing is this type is like hair. It's really sturdy and thin. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't have the details of bursting through the pine. Oh, oh, at the bottom, yeah. But yeah, you probably won't be able to see what I am saying, but it burst through. The, imagine how little um, pine needle is, and it's, it's doing that. I see you're saying it's emerging from a pine needle right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you can see at the base of it, the pieces of the, the skin of the needle, like a star, kind of. That's why I say bursting through. <laughs> like some ascos, some asco my seed, they do that and the wood looks like a star, kind of. The peeling of the, the skin, mm -hmm. you know? What I'm trying to say, yeah. I did the, the sports, not, not too much luck, but I got few. And it has a very huge apiculus, which is the part where the spore is, comes together with the stigmata from the basidium. Right. And I could not get good photos of this particular cystidia that is found in Mycenas. I'm sorry, in Marasmus? Oh my gosh. Is this Marasmus or Mycena? Mara? Ugh. I'm trying to get out of here. Gymnopus. Oh, oh they changed the name. Okay. And it has this particular um, type of cystidia that is called broom cells. I tried so hard and I could not get a good photo. But you can have a rough idea of what it is. It looks like if you slice a cauliflower and you see these little tiny fingers like structures sticking out. Well, if you couldn't really get a better picture of broom cells than that, then I don't feel so bad now of getting frustrated trying to find them um, <laughs> on my scenes and so forth. And, and Ne never having any luck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this one had like three kinds of clams, but I only got a photo of this one. You can see how weird it is. It's kind of inflated too at the septa and it makes the clamp. Yeah. And this is, I'm not sure what this is, if it is young basidia or is some kind of cystidia. I just, I maybe was done for the day after doing so many micro so i i don't remember it could be a uh, basidia or cystidia I, I don't know but it was cool to see the other characters the the broom cells like pretty cool and it's pretty common we find it in many places. We just don't. We just don't care about it. Two needle pine or a needle, yeah, and pine needles, yeah. Two needle pine. Oh, I don't know that. I found it in the pine barrels. I never know if it's two or three. I don't know. I didn't pay attention to that. To tell you the truth, it was in Franklin Park. It was in the pine barrens. It was most in the pine barrens. Yeah, in in Chatsworth. All right, this one I found it in Chestnut Branch Park. I was just getting done coming out of the area where I was looking when there was a huge dead standing tree covered with moss and maybe like one foot up from the from the ground there were two specimens growing from the bark and um, I took it out and it's very powdery when you touch it the scales from the cap and come off from your fingers so even though it was not fully mature I took it home and I managed to get, oh oh the the veil fell off right there uh-huh and you can see the powdery stuff scattered around the scales or whatever you call it. And it, when it's very young, you can notice that the top is flat, it's flattened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thus, I left, I took one and I left the other one 
And when I did the micro, the cystidia was beautiful. It has these tips. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I pointed with the arrows. It's like a globose structure with that tip. And it also has other types of cystidia that I don't really know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that it was exerted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it has this strange, dense material at the end. I found that in many of them, I pointed with the arrow and the other ones in the middle are the basidia. So it's longer than the basidia. I found few spores, uh, seems to have like a thick wall and a prominent apiculus, kind of like an oval shape, kind of. Another one, with, you cannot see the apiculus in this one. Oh, yes, now I remember. I was very surprised to find this, which I haven't found in many, in, in any other uh, mushrooms that I have examined with gills. At the base of the basidia, there were these short cells. And I count many of them, and one had seven septa, as I wrote in there. I, I don't know if this happens in all the leucocoprinos. Uh, I, I don't know, but I will have to examine more to see that phenomenon at the base. This is the exerte basidia that I was, cystidia, I'm sorry, that I was talking to you before, with the dense end. Mm -hmm. <coughs> more of that and in some cases I saw the whole thing without the basidia in the side so it was very long long I'm sorry Oof. same phenomenon and young basidia with that long cystidia Is it, is it this the one with the onion smell? Yeah, no, no onion smell. The the stipe looks like a, an onion stuck, kind of hollow. Yeah, it's not the smell. It's the shape of the stipe, the stem. Okay. Anything else for this one? Uh, I went to the Franklin Parker the day when our foray was canceled for Helmeta Park because the weather wasn't bad here, really. There was no wind, there not, no lightning, no rain, so I went there. And, and I went to look for the blue entoloma, but I didn't find it. But I found two entolomas that are really pretty. I found this white one. It's almost white. And it had a very long stem, and it was growing among moss in the swamp. Um, and I took it home, and I did the micro. I wanted to see the spores. I think that entoloma spores are always um, excited to see it because the shape. And some of them look like a cube of ice, an ice cube. But when I was doing this, I found many uh, monsters. The more regular are the ones on, on the lower part of the photo. And the monster is the one that I am pointing with the arrow. I don't know why. I measured all of them. And I measured the regular ones too. Oh, and when you do the micro of entolomas, um, they have some kind of gluey material. And as soon as you smash the material to observe, there is, there is this material everywhere. So it messes up everything. You can see the, all these little dots on, and yeah, all, of, all everywhere. And the cystidia has contents. You can see these black dots. Oh, the cystidia from the edge of the gills. 
and oh yeah, uh, I didn't point with an arrow uh, to the clamp that is at the base of the cystidia. It's at the center top. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and it has a HIFA with contents. So this was I did only the micro uh, from the cap. So it was really notorious for this dense material inside. Basidia and um, all, some monster spores in there and some cystidia. And the prismatic or cubic, I read somewhere else they call them cubic, but in the book that I have, they call them prismatic. And it's hard to get a good view of them because they're, you, you can, they're not so flat. The stem seems very long for the size of the cap. All right. Anything else for this one? Nope. Uh, this was found also in Franklin Parker. I know it's very common, but it's so pretty. Um, and uh, there was just one. And I took it, and it's also growing among moss in a swampy area. And the whole thing is concolorous, which means the orange, they has, it has an orange cap, an or orange gears, and an orange stem. It's really pretty. And the spores are like the other one. Oh, there is only one difference. This one has a tip at the, on the top of the cap. All right, that's the cystidia from edge of gill, variety of forms as you can see. In the center, there is one with a, something is sticking out in one side. Uh, so still from gills and the same phenomenon about this matter that goes everywhere and makes everything like difficult to see with clarity or clearly. And the same has this HIFA with contents and the contents floating around too. And those are the spores ice cubes. Yeah, those are cool. Those are so cool. My nature is amazing. I did more because they're so cool looking. And they have a very prominent apiculus. It's like a triangle. May I ask, do you find this very often down there? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, but like one or two, yeah. In yeah. The, like in the same area, we, I go to the same area a lot. Do the different times I go. Uh, I find it quite a lot. And this year it's been like on every place I've gone. Mm. Sometimes a lot, sometimes a few. So I don't know whether it's the weather or what, but I see a few every year. But this year I've seen a lot of them just about we, everywhere. We found it on Sunday on, on Stokes too. Oh, did the you? The yellow one and the orange. Both. Right. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I was gonna say I've seen just this year, it seems like a lot of post of them in the area. A lot of Facebook posts and stuff. There are a ton of them in Maine. Mm -hmm. They're having a hot year this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my last one is Geoglossum. And I found it in the pine barrens too. And there was just one. I do not know why the moss around the geoglossum was dead, but it wasn't just a little area around the this club. It was a big area that was dead. Um, it was growing in, in, it was very long. And I was surprised that the head was very thin. Almost no, it's not that big in comparison to the, to the stem, if I can call it like that. So, um, show the other photos, please. I measure it is more than, it's like nine centimeters or so, kind of. 
And the, when I did the micro, it's really pretty. The um, ascus is humongous. And it has this peculiar shape at the tip. It's like a circle at the tip. You can see that in there. Um, I do not know if the ascus uh, has the lid that opens or the spores just, just uh, the skin of the ascus just uh, what's the things out. I, I don't know the system for this one yet. And it has paraphases, which are the infertile parts. And they are on the lower part. They are brown. This is in, in water. And the segmentation is very frequent. It's short cells, made out of short cells. And some have inflated the, the upper part a little bit. More of that paraphases. Another ascus. And, and then I look at the spores, and I, many of them went up to have eight segments. And I found one that was like halfway, half size of this, and it had only four segments. And I was thinking that is probably a young spores because I read somewhere that some spores mature and they get more segments as they mature. So there were no more than eight segments in the ones that I saw. So I look, um, I look on documents online and I found a paper from Taiwan where they include the keys for uh, some geoglossum and a simile, which occurs in different places around the world. And it seems to be very common in the US. And, and it, they have called it so many different names, but at the end, it's just one, simile. That's what they say on their papers. And that's the young four with the four segments. All right, that's, it. that's okay. the end of them. Okay. Awesome, thanks Marcel. You're welcome. Okay, that brings us to Marius. Yeah, where, where do we start? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I was hiking this uh, weekend in the Black Run Preserve, but uh, this one is actually incorrectly labeled. This is right across the street from me. And uh, growing into in a birch uh, probably killed that one trunk uh, because this particular uh, fungus uh, rots out of cores of, of birch trees. So you can uh, scroll down to the next one down. Here. Yeah, you can see that's inside the old trunk. So it must be uh, the remnant of the original fungus that that one last rouse. I don't know. Start parasitizing the the tree trees next to it. So just move on. Uh, this is probably a very old one. I did uh, harvest it and uh, it probably has been there for probably over a year. Um, so it's just interesting to find that you walk right across the street from where you live and you find uh, this and uh, what's it, the uh, dead man's fingers. Uh, what's it called? Uh, so Xylaria polymorpha is, is, uh, is what I call it. Anybody with me on that? Did, did you happen to split it in half, top to bottom? No, I can. And what should I see? Um, if, if it's truly a Xylaria polymorphy, it would be white inside, but then it would have, um, well, somebody described the, they're like little pustule things that the spores are in the assay Cubes. inside and then there's like a single opening but they're all lined up on uh, the okay. outer edge of the skin as it were the black part okay it reminds me of a little stink horn that's that funny shape but i i think you're correct that it's a xylaria polymorpha it is a little unusual that it's just one but it may be what you said that it's 
been there for a while and it's the only one left kind of yeah thing. yeah uh, probably uh, as you can see there's been that stump has gone for quite a while the, the way it's been rotted out may i say something yeah okay um, but there is another species is called Cilaria flabelliformis and they look very sometimes we get confused with them and i was reading that the only difference is the size of the spores oh yeah. okay yeah but also in john plishke told me that Cilaria flabelliformis has a little has some brown tones on it and Cilaria polymorphis is more black yeah, this one is but pretty there is black. Any doubt? Yeah. This it, one is pretty black, but uh, it's also a very old specimen. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so when I actually removed it, uh, um, when it came out, the, the bottom tip broke white. And the the top, as you can see, is also whitish, but that, that is very... Uh, is it supposed to be rock hard? I mean, that thing was horn dry when I picked it. They're supposed to be hard. Yeah, I mean, okay. yeah. But there is a, there's a fair amount of green in it, as you can see. It could be attacked by something else because it's very unusually greenish. It's very unusual. But I okay. have found, oh, that reminds me. I have found in Cilaria polyformis attacked by something that I could never find out what it was, and I did the microscopy of it. It could be um, attacked by something else. That's no. what I was thinking. I was thinking there was something growing on it. Because mm -hmm. hmm. they're usually straight up black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. All right. Cool. Okay, I have the specimen. We'll, if somebody wants it, uh, we can we probably split it. <laughs> and uh, I have to apologize um, for this. Uh, the focus is going to be a bit out on it. Um, I'm actually uh, disabled in a motor vehicle accident, and this trail is the only one that I can really walk, and I can't really get close off the woods. But um, yeah, this is Northern Tooth Fungus. Uh, Clima, what's that? Clima codon uh, septer triola. Triole. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Igor, help me out. Septentrionalis. <laughs> well, Matadon septentrionalis. Well, that is what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the name that you proposed will be deleted because it's non scientific. Uh, the name for Clamitadon septentrionalis already exists on MO, just to let you know. Uh, okay. All right. No, I mean, I thought I'll put it on here to share. The interesting thing is this, uh, the next picture is from the top. And uh, this, this, is there a way to zoom in on that? Uh, again, the focus is a bit out, but you can see there from the center, it grows these, uh, it's either been, I don't know, eaten or is it immature? fronds growing out of the center there is one of them that grows the anamorph on the top Igor, remember, don't look do you remember there's one of these polypodia that grows we are on the top i don't remember the name but i have seen it in the books you don't remember um yeah not a kind of code but i um Um, yeah, it always takes me a minute. To, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but it, because it looks really unusual, that that texture on the top. Yeah, but the, the, the interesting thing is, this is a you can see it's quite rotted, and I suspect this is a maple or something, mm -hmm. and it's growing on. Typically, these grow on 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 um, live trees, don't they, or parasitize the tree itself. And this one has definitely fallen quite rotten. I don't think it's that the trinalis. Yeah, I don't think it I don't think it is either. I'm trying to I'm trying to decide for what that is. Something yeah. cetosis or Yeah. Um I don't remember the genus. Yeah, the focus is slightly out here. Sorry about that. I did not collect it. I had to zoom in, I couldn't get off the trail to it. Uh, I can't think of a name. You're of thinking it. of Sarcodontia Satosa? Yeah, Sarcodonia or something. Sarcodontia. Yeah. Um, maybe. The, the, look at the 
teeth. The teeth are pretty kind of flattened, aren't they? Um, yeah, I was first thinking it was conial, but they're pretty flat. You're quite right, and, and, they, and they're pretty large. They, it's uh, for the size of the mushroom itself. And they, uh, I would say those mushrooms is about the, the the widest one is about maybe four inches. Yeah, this this is not the climacodon. Because a climacodon uh, forms like a pattern. It's one unit made out of several uh, yeah, shelves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. shelves. And, and, body, and, and, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it, yeah, it grows like a bee, bee eye. What's, the, what's that thing, Pachysperma? I think it might be, or is that the species name? Yeah, that's uh, a species name. What's the genus for that thing? Oxyporus or something? No, um, I can't remember. Something I, Pachysperma. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I, I got. Yeah, it's a white thing, and I think it's got teeth. Yeah, I'm, I'm tempted to go back this weekend and take a zoom lens to it. Is Pongipellis? Yeah, Spongipellis. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one I'm trying to think of. Does that make okay. any sense here? Can somebody put that for me in the chat? Yeah, I write it. I think I think you might have that, Dave. Or uh, if somebody can go to me on uh, Mushroom Observer. How and, I write uh... that? Oh, chat. Hey. Yeah, I think you got that, Dave. Made spongy bellies. Yeah, I kind, I kind of remembered what it sounded like. I got yep. the P A C H oh, right. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. Well, look at that. Yeah, they have that fish fat and teeth on. Because they form. Oh my gosh, hello? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, what happened? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, I, I lost some image, but you can hear me. Um, it forms caps. Spongipelis don't forms caps. I, I have found it several times. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pre I, now that you say that, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Spongipalus pachydon. Pachydon. I, Igor, what does that mean in Latin? A what? The, the, the pachydon. What does it mean in Latin? Pachy, I think, means uh, thick. Thick, large. It's like an elephant. And don is tooth, so it's a thick tooth. Thick tooth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that calls it. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh. Even with an out of focus uh, photo. <laughs> Don't excuse yourself. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your last one, okay? In the area body, yeah. Okay. So uh, on on the on this um, topic, I mean, it looks like it, the uh, the bullets is the topic for for this for for this week. Um, uh, this is an immature specimen. Definitely, I found them in a cluster. There were actually four. I harvested one. Um, and I brought it back. Um, this, yeah. So there's the the, the photo, definitely uh, uh, bullet, and uh, probably um, the, the bay bullet. Um, and it bruises no, no, it's like not. not it greenish blue and then turn gray. It's this is not the bay bullet. Is it not the yeah, bay bullet? It's, it's it's not. No. But what, what kind of trees? This is called the uh, Boletus olivisporus. Oh, oh that's the Olivia Spores. Okay. This is this is probably uh, you. You went to the Pine Barrens, haven't you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to type it in the chat. Yeah, this is uh, the uh, the the Black Run Preserve. Uh, we are at the edge of the Pine Barrens. There you go. Uh, oh, Ryan, who is talking? I don't know who you are. Sorry, me, Marius from Milan. Marius. Yo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yours. See. <laughs> See. <laughs> um, uh, did I have a picture in there when it sliced in half? It was interesting. When I cut it through, it was a uh, gray flesh. Uh, it looks very scaly texture, and then it turns like very dark very quickly when I cut it through. Nah, I didn't put it in yeah. there. Sorry. It turns and turns. It's a ready blue stainer. It turns blue, but then within yeah. a minute or two, it starts turning brown on the inside. So yes. It's, yes. It's a yes. very unusual bullet, and uh, genetically, it's very distinct. It doesn't. It 
it, it should be placed in its own genus. I'm trying to say that. Huh. Um, okay. I was unable to match it to any other known genus in the Boletaceae. So it's a one kind of an oddball species. Well, there was quite a good cluster of them right next to the uh, pathway. Have you tried to eat it? Um, I hear it's quite uh, edible. <laughs> well, maybe so. <laughs> but, uh, let me know how it goes for you. Yeah, I, I, okay. I, would, like, I would like to know that too. <laughs> uh, this old field guide from Texas says that they're edible. I have not tried to eat those things. Um, well, I, I typically don't eat anything that I pick uh, outside. I actually am a mushroom grower. I, I grow 13 different species of mushroom in my house, in my basement, or outside in the property. Ah, then you should be talking to our secretary, Steph uh, Bierman. Okay. The cultivators. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, thank you. Thanks for sharing, Mary. All right. Susan. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Saw a lot of mushrooms, but just a few oddballs that I saw. I'm I'm calling this Claveria fumosa, but I'm not sure if that's correct. Flesh color, not clair, uh, Clavulinopsis fusiforma, but I've seen it sometimes here. Grass kind of habitat, but there was hemlock, ash, and I forget what other trees there. Anyway, it's a pretty little thing and very distinct. You can see there was more than one cluster. Susan? In central Adirondacks. Susan? Yeah. But look at the tip. It's blunt. No yeah. pointy. No pointy. Right. Isn't fusiformis pointy? No. 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 No, oh, she's saying it's not fusiformis. No, it's not fusiforma. And right. even though when fusiforma dries, it will go pointy. But it's normally when it's yellow, it, it's much more yellow than this is. This is this color is true. It's this pinky flesh color. No, fusiformis is bright yellow, so it cannot be that. Right. Yeah, right. and it and it is usually pointed. And these are are these individual fruit bodies, or are they arising from? No, a, it's a cluster, just like Fusiforma, but it isn't. Okay. Form is what I'm saying. Did, did did you have a name for it, Sue? I didn't quite catch it. Uh, I Fumosa, I think, is what I had found. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. What's the genus <laughs> name? Claveria. Let me just look up and see what I, I think. I put it on iNaturalist. Let me see. Still Claveria Fumosa, really? Hmm. Or maybe I didn't put it up because I wasn't sure. No, I didn't put it up because I wasn't sure what it was. No, no, that was. I, the... typed, I typed the name and the reference in Mushroom Experts. So anybody Does wants that to... sound correct? Is I guess what I'm asking. Do any of you know this at all? Negative oh. on my end. No. Not my department. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know this. But isn't um, Fumosa, isn't that the one that it's, it's the, they really are just like little cylinders. They're not like um, 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 compressed down the middle. Like there's the, the little you mean individual. You mean individual fruiting bodies freestanding, not as well, a. I'm not sure if they're freestanding, but, but I, but I think, um, they're like little cylinders, aren't they? Like the one, like the one right in the middle, with with the blade of grass in front of it. I I couldn't tell you. The only one yeah. I really see often is the uh, the bright yellow. Yeah, I, I don't I don't really know. I'm just trying to guess from memory, oh, you know, just, memory of looking at pictures. I just wondered if any of you had seen something like this more often than I do. No, I don't. I don't see this. Year. Actually, you know what I. No, no, honestly, no, I don't see this. Uh, well, maybe something a little bit similar last week, and I didn't know what it was. Um, but I, I don't think it was the same thing. So it's a more interesting um, mushroom than I thought. Okay. Uh, we found, we found um, single ones uh, of that apricot color. Um, but in the in the woods in Franklin Parker, but it not clumped together like that. Um, and and I found in Baroni, I found the name uh, Clavianopsis 
Grassy, gra, Grassy Lima. Okay. Well, I don't know if that's. And I don't think I saw that. It, it's in Peroni. Uh, it's in uh, it's in the uh, Baroni book. Uh, yeah, page. I have that. Yeah, yeah. I'll look. Page four thirty. Did, did you happen to dry any of it, Susan? No, and I don't think I saved it at all, which is too bad. I know where it is, but it's about an hour south of me. Adirondack Museum is where it was growing on the campus. Okay. Okay, now, uh, Igor, I'm not sure if this is a good enough picture, but I was calling this, well, Belita speciosus. Um, but whether it's close to the Bruneus. Bru it is Bruneus. It is Bruneus. Okay. Yes. Is it got a different funny genus name now? It's a Butyria boletus. It's a butter bullet. Okay. Butyria boletus. I'm going to type it in. Oh, all what, right. But it is what, the Bruneus. Was the stock Bruneus. very finely reticulate? I maybe only up, on the upper half, maybe? I think it was. Yeah. When they're very young, it's really, really hard to see. Sometimes if you just run your finger yeah. over yeah, like, and make it lose yeah. blue. Ah, you can see it in the blue part. Yeah, you can see it's reticulate. Yeah, you see how where it's stained blue? Yep, yep, yep. You see and the reticulation? This, yep, yeah. that's it. Yep, um, Igor's got it. That's it. I this agree. Was, I mean, it's not a great picture, but this was the better of the three. But it, it, it stained blue fairly quickly once you touch it or do anything to it. Yeah, but the main, the main thing is you can see the reticulation on the blue yeah, part. Yeah, can see that. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, beautiful, that's a, that's a Bruneus thing. Yeah. Once I see this combination of colors, you know, the cap and the and the stem, and I see the hemlock needles, that's that's the dead ringer for Bruneus. There's nothing else. It's it's a very um, unusual bullet, and it's mycorrhizal with hemlock only. You will never find this in deciduous woods. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely hemlock. I've only seen this about three um, in, in the same place, the other place. And this was the first time I've seen it in this particular spot. But it's close enough for me to check on it often. Um, if, you, if you get it before the bugs do, it's edible. Yeah, it's actually excellent. Is it? Yes. Ha! I only picked the one on the left. I left the, the one on the right to, to grow because I wasn't sure what it was for sure. But that it has a very distinct color on the cap that is kind of dull, which was also what brought my attention to the coloring. It's a pretty, pretty thing. I wish this was more in focus. Anyway, okay. Yeah, now I can't remember what, with these foliotas, the one that's dry, that's beige, is that Squarosoides or? Squarosoides is the tacky one. Okay, so this is Squarosa. Squarosa, thank you. I was reading uh, that the difference between Squarosa and Squarosoides is the size of the spores. Yeah. Yes, the spores give it yep. away if you measure the spores. Mm -hmm. Squarosoides has really small spores. I just found some a week ago and looked at the spores. They're like smaller than six microns. Mm -hmm. We found it in the stokes, and I'm going to do the spores to measure them. But otherwise, they look the same. Very close. Hmm. Yeah, hard to tell from just by seeing. And if it's wet weather, you know, either one can be kind of tacky or, or slimy. What happened here was that these grew out in a hurry, and then they sort of stopped mid-growth because it started. So that's why they even look. If you look at the one down at the bottom uh, right, it 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 just kind of dried up. So. That's why they're not even getting to the point of producing much in spores for the dark purpley, dark brown, uh, remember. Yeah, there's a few other differences that are pointed out. One of the two has gills that go through a green stage, but I'm not sure that that's always going to be the case. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think one of the two species favors conifer, and maybe the other one is a little bit more less picky. I'm not sure about that either. But just a few things to check. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it's about time up here for foli foliotis to uh, start turning up. Uh, maybe not where you are, but I, I'm 
been kind I of. I got some. I got some last week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the Poconos. We're moving into fall. Okay, I call this Hidnellum orontiacum. Uh, let's see, one that's orange pretty much all the way through it. These are sort of mid-age to almost a little older, but young enough to still have a lot of white growing. And we've had a little bit of rain in the last few days. And this is a mushroom that will stop and start in its growth. It can sort of sit out there for a while and then it'll kind of grow over a several week period. So that's why it looks like it's fresh growing it. And this is also a mushroom um, that has indeterminate growth that um, will surround whatever gets in its way, pine needles and grass and little trees and stuff. But you can see in the top uh, mushroom that's cut in half, it's not only zoned orange inside, but you can see the little spines that are brown with white tips. So um, I call this Hednellum orontycum. And I took this picture today and I actually walked away from them because there were so many. I just said, no, no, it's an okay dyer, but it's not great. It kind of makes a funny green or gray color. And it was very hard for me to just, don't pick any more, don't pick any more. So they're all sitting on my porch, sort of drying out a little bit. Okay, and then the last one, what, oh, I had to show you this. This is so cool. There's a guy up here who's an exceptional artist and he, um, Fauna, flora, flora, fauna on flora is what he calls his little business. And he lives up in the Northwest Adirondacks, but he does this incredible artwork on these Ganodermas and mounts them on little stands or whatever. World behind this one, but it's just well done. I think he dries them first and then um, does them with a Dremel or, or some kind of a etching thing, but um, he gets some money for them, but not not outrageous. And they're always worth it. Really, really good artists. I thought you'd get a kick out of this. On the ed, on the uh, order of what Bernice Fado used to do. Yeah, very cute. Qual quality work on the Ganoderma. I think that's it, right, uh, Luke? Yeah, that is it. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Do. As always, thank you, Susan. All right, it looks like. Maximilian is our last contender for the night. Uh, yeah, hi everyone. So I don't know if this is a particularly exciting mushroom, uh, but I found this one outside of my campus. Um, so I was just like, I might as well um, figure out what it is. So I think it's a type of Amanita. Um, and I think down to species, it's um, Rubicines. Rubicines. Um, so yeah. Um, it had not a super particularly strong odor, but it was like, you know, it was uh, potent enough um, and it was growing on a uh, red oak um, root. So that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the details. I think this is a Manita Faba Rubens. And yeah, it's it a little bit brown, but the, the really a lot of yellow underneath suggests flower rubens. There is a, a rubes, a rubes, a mer rubescens uh, species that has the yellow partial veil, but that's, uh, what's that one? Do you remember that name, Igor? Yeah, Oreo sabucula. Okay, yeah. You don't think it's that? I think this is, I think this is flower rubens. When I saw the, it from underneath, that was my first thought. You know, the cap's a little bit brown though. The vulva is yellow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The um, and and look at the look at the youngster. The young you know, one is yellow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So the older one is just probably pretty completely rubescent. Then it's just stained, I guess. It's not rubescent. It just changes color of the cap. It gets darker. You know, but flower rubies. Well, okay. Is... I I guess that's what I mean. Yeah. But um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Flavor rubens. Yep. So what they're saying is there's less pink tones and more yellow tones for rubescence would be more pinky red coloring where this one has yellows. Is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Also, there's a there's a, a rubescence far alba that's kind of white almost and maybe a little brown in the middle. But that's but that's just another that's just another thing to bring up. It's not this. Mm -hmm. 
If okay. you saw the two together, you would see the difference, but you're 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 in the right area, certain certainly with the Amanita rubescence, but more specifically Flavo rubescence. I agree. Well, Flavo rubens is not from the uh, rubescence group. It is rubescent, but it's not related. Well, maybe it is related somewhat to the rubescent clade. Okay, Amanita rubescence actually is European. What we have in America is a conglomerate of um, lookalikes yeah. of rubescence that have been given different names, but it's a species cluster and Flavarubens is not part of them. Oh, Flavarubens is a different is a different species altogether. Oh, I didn't know that. So Collectively, we call these things, other than Flavorubens, a merry rubescence group. And it's been broken down right now into these provisional names by Rod because he's been doing DNA for a long time. Rubens, not rubescence. That's what he's been talking about. Everybody knows what he's saying. All right. There you go, Max. Thank you. Um, can so someone put the name in the chat for me, please? Oh, you did. Oh, you did. All right, thank you. And I can also direct you to a uh, um, a website uh, of uh, of the world renowned Amanita expert Rod Tavas with that page, so you can read about the mushroom. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. And other ones as well. All right. Well, that covers everybody. Brought us up to the left for nine. So great job, everyone. Lots of killer mushrooms this week. Um, I'll leave my, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off personally. I'm going to go get ready for work tomorrow, but I'll leave my computer on if any of you guys want to hang out for your overtime Sorry. sessions. Um, but we will see everyone next week. Thanks, Luke. Hey, you're welcome. Have a good night, everyone. See you, Luke. Good night. Good night, Luke. Thanks. Good night, okay. guys. Good night. So uh, what else do we have? Anyone wants to share more mushrooms, like Lila, maybe? <laughs> All I got are Amanitas. But that's for another time. Oh, Amanitas are good. Yeah, Amanitas are a fair game. We have enough expertise, I think, between uh, a few people here to uh, at least, you know, venture a guess. Are you trying to share? As I said, it's probably the best if I save it for next time. I'm uh, still trying to get my new my new laptop to function on that. I see. Got an old Mac from my mom, so I'm still trying to figure out how to share things. Come on, Lila, I know we have a boatload of mushrooms to show. Uh, not so many. I haven't, I, the last couple of weeks, I haven't been out. I still have a bunch from Maine. I haven't yeah. even gotten you off your, my phone yet. But you have I, your I Maine reserves. Have, yeah. Yeah, I got I to gotta work on that. But I can't remember if I showed this one last week or not. Um, hang on. Hmm, I don't think so. Okay. Do you have more pictures? Yeah, I got a couple. I think Roxanne, maybe? No, I think it's on my OI students and Sibos. Oh, okay. There we go. Very quickly stained. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely not Roxanne. <laughs> yeah, Roxanne doesn't stain. So the name is Lan Mawa. If I pronounce it correctly, that's Chinese. Mamawa pseudo sensibilis. Oh, yeah, this is one that was from Maine. Okay. Okay, so you can propose that. Right. Lone, 
Lone Tucker. Yeah, I will do so. All right. So I'll let somebody else go next. I'll see if I can find anything else. Baby, have anything? Uh, just stuff I sent to Luke as links. I, I I don't I don't know how to share stuff. I mean, what do I do? I I got some pictures, I guess. You just go um, in the mall and you share your screen. Yeah, but when I leave the when I leave Zoom, then I like out and I have to get back in. Um, or let me see. You know what? Let me open up another. Um, oh, there we go. Um, so let me, let me let me see what I can do. So can you can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm opening up. Mo. I'm I'm in like a different window of um, the internet. So let's see. Let's see. Okay, that was this thing that I don't I don't know go. how to share it though. Um, uh, someone is sharing something right now. We see uh, these uh, mushrooms growing on mulch or something. Who who is that? Yeah, that's not me. I, I, I'm not mean, sure how to I share. I figured it out. Okay, well, let's scroll for some pictures. Oh, there we go. Okay, I see this now. Can you show some more, Evan? Hmm. That's that's, that's basically it. Okay. Um, I think I I might know the species. This is Amanita, definitely uh, from section Amanita. I believe I've seen the species twice. I've even sequenced it both times. It doesn't have a ring and it has a pale yellow cap with these whitish warts. Um, no name, but it has relatives in Europe and Asia. Very close, if I'm correct, if that's what this is. So I cannot tell you anything beyond the fact that it belongs in section Amanita. Okay, so unless Dave wants to add to that. No, I, I can't do any better than that. I mean, that that was sort of where I was leaning. Uh, I was trying to think of a species, but I can't think of anything. It's Alba Creation it doesn't have the little no, uh, no. the little deposits on the cap usually. Like this. no, no. Yeah, so um, Alba Creation has the rolled sock vulva as well. So yeah, I don't think it's that. Yeah, one of these pale or yellowish. Was this more yellow in reality? Did the, the photo kind of wash out a little bit? You're muted because we cannot hear you. Yeah, yeah, we can't hear the answer to my question because uh, apparently someone is muted. Evan, is it Evan? Or oh, was that? Uh, oh, we're listen. asking if the caps were more yellow than they show in the pictures. Well, actually, no. Um, sorry about that. Uh, one of my, I had friends over and they were playing a game nonstop, but they finally stopped. I could hear, but um, they were exactly as they appear right now. Like I first thought that it might have been some of the mushrooms in the same area that I found many years prior because it was on a cycle during this time of year. But these mushrooms, I had to take photos because they were very unique. They were, I've never seen them this pale in color before. The colors you're seeing right now, yeah, that's exactly how they appear. And um, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna, uh post to the chat the link to the Amanitas, uh, the Amanitas species that I was talking about. I think it's the same the, the same one that you have. Um, so if anybody wants to compare. Uh, I find it also very odd because they underneath they don't have a collar. Yes, there's no ring. 
So I just posted that link and. Uh, is that a, a numbered species? No. Oh, there's a name for it. There's no name for it, no. No, so then it's an, like an SP number, right? Well, Rod doesn't have it. I don't think Rod has it. I mean, oh, I, I'm sorry. You're getting this from someplace else. Yeah, oh. I, I sequenced it and, uh, you know, oh. and sequencing got interesting results, you know, relations, very close relations to Europe and Asia, but uh, nothing from North America, I think, that Rod sequenced. So hmm. I, I contacted him with that. He never replied to me, so which is usual. That is interesting. Yeah, so the link is there. If you want to compare it to mine, you can go ahead and click on that. And that's okay. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, sorry about this. I'm still deathly trying to figure out how to use a Mac. Oof. Yeah, they're not very intuitive if you're a Windows user. Yeah, seriously, like photo editing, video editing, they're great, but everything else, yeah. So if you could uh, stop sharing, then others could uh, uh, show us their finds. Oh, yes, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, let's see. Well, it should be in um, in Zoom. I, there we go. OK. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You have another one of those Lamoas or whatever it's called. Lamoa? Lamoa. Uh, you, you have that? Another one, yeah. Okay. And then I have a, a whole series of corals that maybe people are interested. Yeah, I also have a coral. All right, so let's just quickly see if this is the same as the one I... Look, it looks to me the same. Well, we have to we have to scroll and see. Mm. Now, the distinctive feature of one Maua, uh, when you cut it, it turns blue sometimes slowly, but after a while, the bluing disappears and changes over to uh, to this reddish brown discoloration. You know, the only one Maua that does that is this one. So I don't know. Um, it, it is La Maua because the tube layer is very thin. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Citizen Sybilis is probably, you know, my, my first choice, but I'm not completely certain. Okay. That probably is. It's very yeah. common. So it's very widespread. It's very common. And uh, I think that... Uh, benefit you know uh, uh, the proposal benefits from that okay. i think there i found it about 10 minutes before that I, that other one i showed okay so i say oh. same woods right same woods yeah all right okay i'm on maui citizen sibilis it is okay yeah super thin four layer it was interesting yeah, the Besets book says that they're edible, but uh, not substantial or not really worthy of, you know, you know, they're not very flavorful. I've never eaten those. Okay. Well, Mao is not really the genus I want to try eating. Wow. I think we've seen the species everywhere. I mean, we were at Stokes. We've seen that thing there too. Kind of dark yellow, kind of like yolk, um, yolk, egg yolk yellow, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, pretty. Uh, maybe maybe Formosa. The yellow tips, Romario Formosa. Let, let me see if Kuo has anything about that. Uh, Romario Formosa. Yeah, I'm not sure if the branches, um, you know, form all those individual um, little spikes like this. But I, I know that Romaria Formosa has the yellow tips, at least when it's young. This was this was quite yellow. Yeah, the whole thing looks pretty yellow, Reed, yeah. but the tips are like more yellow, it seems to me. Yes, I think I think so. Well, Michael Kuo says the following about Rameria formosa. Um, branches vertically oriented, smooth or wrinkled, coral pink when young and fresh, becoming pinkish, then orangish to yellowish tan with age. Tips yeah, clear that... yellow, becoming orangish to yellowish tan. Yeah, that actually sounds wrong. These look like they probably were pale yellow right from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah, they don't look like something that's changed. And then there was, yeah, just for contrast, I don't know what this other one was on the left, but just, <laughs> um, yeah, that one is kind of almost pinkish. With some was yellow. the yellow one, was that on wood or on the ground, do you know? Um, on the ground, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Dave, we definitely saw this at Stokes. I mean, I saw it at Stokes, you know, uh, uh, two days Yeah, ago. I didn't look at the Romarias. I just, like, you know, Dorothy knows those pretty well. So I just like, hand, you know, I just basically handle all those off to her. And, um, if you want to idea a Maria, may I suggest uh, um, the book by, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, Jesus. I'm just, you know, forgetting people's names all of a sudden. Um, the British guy, what's his name? Not Baron. Um, well, he Gibby? published... What's not that? Kibbe. Not Kibby. Not, right? not not Kibby. No, not Kibby. Um, uh, oh, let, iron, me bring, let me bring the book. I, I have it here in the shop. Uh, iron salt, salts are useful as well, with, uh, Romaria. Mm -hmm. So you'll get some color changes with iron salts. Okay. All right. I'll have to get some of those. Yeah, I think you can actually buy just buy that stuff online. Okay. Roger Roger Phillips is the name of the author. Yeah. Oh, okay, Phillips. So right. Phillips actually, I brought it here. Phillips has a lot of these Ramarius. So let me actually quickly scan the book and see if we have a name. At least that would be, uh, because you know this one is very distinct because it grows on the ground and it's very yellow. Yeah. So where are Ramarius? Uh, okay, I think I'm getting close. And there's a lot of branches too on you know the branches make a lot of tips and the tips become branches and develop, have more tips so there's a lot of branching on this yeah yeah mm. yeah he has a few of these but i'm trying to do a visual match and uh not really coming up with anything. How about this one? Uh, Ramari acrescence, whatever that is. Have you tried to smell it? Um, I probably did, but I didn't make any note of it. I couldn't tell you what it is. What it smells like at this point. Okay, so Rameria acrescence, and apparently it's um, species by stunts. So I think it's American. Uh, it says uh, fruit body, um, twenty nine cent, up to twenty nine centimeters high. Why um, uh, 18 centimeters wide, many slender, elongated, almost parallel, num uh, numerously branching dichotomous branches with rounded tips, pale buff yellow or buff orange, browner toward the base. Um, 
Not really browner towards the base. Well, the pictures that he's showing here are not really brown either. Mm -hmm. uh, or faintly musty sweet or are too bean-like. Um, habitat on the ground under western hemlock. Ah, so it's a, it's a western species. Never mind. Was there any documentation on what materials it metabolizes that would allow for it to have that hue, like sulfur maybe, or phosphorus? No, I'm sorry, I missed the first part of your sentence. Oh, sorry. Um, has there been any like documentation you've seen in research about what it might be metabolizing to allow for it to have that hue or color? Oh, I know nothing about Ramarius. I'm not even sure, you know, what literature to access to look for those things. Um, we don't have any experts in the club on, on these uh, um, coral mushrooms. They're very difficult. And nobody's really touching them, you know, with a 10-foot pole even. Um, uh, well, one they, of the things that's funny is that yellow one was growing on leaves, right? Which, when they decompose, generate quite a bit of nitrogen. So that might be something, or possibly phosphorus. Well, the uh, the color is just pigments, and they synthesize them. Okay, so you cannot just say it's sulfur. It's probably some kind of a large organic molecule that gives them the, this kind of particular, you know, yellow color. That that would be my guess. Um, of course. I mean, it's also possible that depending on the uh, what's in the soil, I mean, they can change their color. You know, maybe these species are variable. And they appear paler, you know, in different soil types or darker in other soil types. I mean, who knows? All right, well. Yeah. Moving on to another one. So I skipped over the Ramaria stricta. I think everybody knows what that one looks like. But I would right. say this is not Ramaria stricta, but I don't know what it is. Couldn't say. No, uh, Ramariopsis kunsii is really starkly white, but then it gets kind of pink. And I don't think it's so highly branched. And it's, and it's not, not more also, vertically aligned. And it's also not so meaty either, I think. Yeah, it's not so meaty either. Yeah. Yeah, there's Champignon du Quebec has a few white Ramaria species. I don't know the names, but there's like two or three white Ramaria species or, or, or whitish at least. Um, you usually end up having to measure spores with these Ramarias. Mm -hmm. uh, spore, spore size varies somewhat amongst the Ramaria species. How do you get spores off of these? Just lie, just lie it down on a slide. Okay. Just take some branches and lie them down on a slide. You know, it no. might take a while. Uh, it might take more than a day. But just lie, lie some branches down on a slide. Okay. And also spore print color is a little bit useful with Ramaria. Some of them have um, yellow prints, orange prints, but I, I think the spore print kind of matches the, the um, color of the fruit body. So I, I would imagine this one's going to be almost white, the spores. Right. Oh. Dave mentioned Michael Quebec. I mean, it's a very rich resource, mycological resource, probably the best reference to go to. The downside, of course, is that it's in French. So you have to use Google Translate to get the, um, um, the English version. But in my experience, actually, Google Translate does pretty well. So they have quite a few Ramarias in there. So you may want to sort of go through them. Unfortunately, there's no way to visualize them. Uh, by pictures, you just just have to you know go through each name. There's a list of names. You just click on them. Yeah. Um, All so, right. I, you know, one one time I went to that site and my browser, I, I think it was using Chrome, it actually translated it into English. All of a sudden, the the, the site changed into English. It was like magic. <laughs> well, part of it does change to English, but not the mushroom names. I think when you okay. order descriptions. Okay. The descriptions. All right. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, when I get some time, I'll have to go play around there. Um, Lauren, do you want to show something here before I go on and screw up more time? 
no, 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 not at all. No, all right. I just wanted to report that I found my first Calvatia Gigantia of 2021 today. That's all. Yeah, sounds like fall is upon us. Yeah. How big? Oh, it was big. Yeah, I was driving past, it was on um, Lamington Road. Um, I was driving past it kind of, you know, 40 miles an hour-ish, so I didn't get a good look at it, but I mean, I could tell that's definitely what it was. All right, mushrooming while driving. <laughs> yeah, always, was it, always. Was it the size of the uh, uh, soccer ball? It was bigger than a soccer ball. Oh. Bigger than a soccer ball, wow. Yeah. Or, or about the same size. It was big, yeah. Wow. You know, it's it's edible when young, and uh, people say that it uh, the, the texture and the taste rem reminds of the uh, fried eggplant. It's even more boring than eggplant. It's like tofu. It's so boring. I don't ever need to eat it again. I don't know why people <laughs> like it so much. Just make it like eggplant parmesan. It's still put, so boring. I'd rather just put it in egg and and fry uh, breadcrumbs and fry it in olive oil and stack it up with cheese and put sauce over it and then mm -hmm. you know it's not that it's everything he's anymore. saying is awesome D dave uh, it yeah. looks like you have a good recipe do you think you can uh, put it in, in text you know you probably have it saved somewhere right that's a pretty easy one it's you just do what i said really <laughs> it's, it's pretty simple, value it's a pretty it's simple recipe this is not like that's stack. That's you get the you get the you slice it about a quarter inch thick or maybe a little more, maybe between a quart, like three eighths of an inch, something like that, and um, dip it in egg, scrambled, you know, um, beaten egg, and then in breadcrumbs, and fry it in olive oil, and then you just put it in a casserole dish, and um, you know you sort of um, layer it, but. They sort of straddle the, the 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 layers, right? So so it's not you're not reconstructing the whole thing from bottom to top. Uh, so it sort of lays a little flatter, and you just put some parmesan, uh, some um, mozzarella in between, and put some sauce on top and bake it for about half an hour or so. It's, I just did good. that exact same recipe last night with <laughs> eggplant on the bottom and chicken of the woods on top. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of mushrooms you can make. Like, you can make hen of the woods like that, too, if you're full of. I've done that. Oh, I haven't tried it that with that recipe. Yeah, it's a little harder because the fronds are a little harder to work with because they're sort of branchy. Um, but it's good. It's very meaty. You know, um, uh, Griffola is very meaty. Yeah. Mike and like, I like, have a, a secret recipe that we haven't tried yet that we're going to try with Griffola. Uh, this fall so we're looking forward to finding it and then starting a whole restaurant just based off of this one sandwich <laughs> yeah start a restaurant <laughs> just for this one sandwich that we, we we're pretty sure is going to be amazing <laughs> so you better right. call the sandwich something amazing <laughs> what, what 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 like it has to be catchy it has to be edgy and it has to be a pun you have to have a pun witch <laughs> Okay, well, let me see how the recipe turns out first, and then if it's good, then uh, we'll work on the name. Oof. Okay. What's this? Well, this this one's not Romaria. This is, you know, I get these ones confused all the time. The ones that start, the genus starts with C-L-A. Clavulina. Clavulina. That's what's what the I one that's, What's the one that's Scenera? Or Scenaria? Um... And it's also Coralloides. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's probably this is this is probably Scenaria. I would say it's kind of gray and the tips tips are dark. Well, let's see if there's a page for that. See how the the ed, see how the ends of the, the the tips sort of flatten out. Yeah, it's like a like a webbed hand, webbed hand or something. Yeah, like a webbed hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it is Clavulinopsis. I I always have to look up those C L A ones because I mix them up. It seems oddly familiar to my take mushroom, except more tubular and stemmy. 
ha it has a weird maitake feel to it when I look at it. Hmm. Well, maitake is um, that's that's griffola. Those are really big and meaty. This and is meaty. quite small. This is pretty small. You can yeah, see these are small. Yeah, well, these are just. I'm, I'm not thinking about size. I'm thinking about the pattern of the growth, the branching pattern of the entity, like the, the mushroom itself. It's oddly similar to it. That might be something. Like how my talkie mushrooms are their own form of fractal in their growth, but this one is in a similar form. Well, the color is similar. That, that's that's one similarity. And the fanning at the tips. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ku um, says that this is Christata and Coralloides, and uh, that um, Cineria is just a form of Christata uh, that has been attacked by some kind of a parasite called the Halminos, Halmi, Halmin. Those I don't know what it is. Anyway, you, you can read it on the page that I just uh, posted in the chat. So. Uh, yeah, I think I have. Well, yeah, let me look at this. So then this would just be Cristata then. Christata. Yeah. Which I think is the same as Coralides. Are they the same? Uh, well, he's saying, let's see. Uh, also known as Clavulina Coralides, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think I'm a. Uh... Want to that better match that? I think they grow under conifers. Hmm. So what was that name again on the um, uh, INAT? You just you know. Uh, I'm sorry. Hang on. Yes, that's the that's the word I was I was trying to pronounce. Yeah. So apparently oh. apparently they did transfer it to another genus. Hmm. So, oh. so Cool says that. Um. Bavaria cristata is attacked by this parasite called the Hel Helminthospatheria, okay, and turns that into that color. But apparently, that's what this is. Maybe that, that's what that thing is. Maybe the name actually refers to the parasite, not to the host, as seen here. Yeah, I, I think so. This one, this one looks like it's pretty well... This one looks, actually. Yeah, this this one looks, looks kind of different, actually. It does. It does. And this one, I I thought maybe this was the right ID for this for whenever I worked on it. But um, yeah, it it's different. It doesn't have those hand, you know, like the webbed hand kind of look that we were talking about. You know, right. with, with the way it was branching. This is this is different it's, from that other one. Still has the flat tips though okay so i found this out so uh helmin's patheria actually is a, a parasite on uh, clavulina cristata giving it this uh, smoky appearance all right so this is a parasitized cristata then yeah. So, so the name that was there actually is for the parasite, not for the uh, not for the coral mushroom itself. Okay. So, do we think they were the same? I'm sorry. Do we think this is the the uh, cristata that hasn't been parasitized? They're, they're probably the same, actually. Uh, it's probably the same coral, uh, only this one is not parasitized, right? Yeah. Okay. And this one is. Okay. All right. I will uh, stop and let somebody else show some stuff. Yeah, I have uh, a, a coral. You guys um, see that? Yeah, that that looks like maybe Kunzii. Yeah, there's some parasitization on the side. Here Actually, also. oh wait, no, no, this one has the flattened tips also. 
Yeah, yeah this looks like an Claudio and Opsis also. Yeah, I would say it's Claudio and Opsis. Was this under co a conifer? A coniferous area? Yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't know because there's fields of them growing on um, Blackron and it's uh, on the edge of the pine barrens. So there's... But I mean, it's at the edge of this deciduous trees, this hemlock. There's about everything there. But literally fields and fields of this growing. Plus, definitely uh, something is parasitizing it in the middle. So you say, what's it? Uh, uh, I think really it's the same thing Lila just really showed. Notice? I think it is actually. These are just, this is just a bigger fruit body with more stems and branches. Yeah. This, this yeah, look at the tips, the, the way they feather. They, they have like these flattened fingers, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, that's a Claudia Winopsis trait. Okay, okay. Okie dokie. Okay. <laughs> Late. Are we still doing anything or anybody I'm gonna, has anything else? I'm gonna turn in folks. Thanks for the time. Yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna go too. I'm getting tired. Yeah, it's quarter to ten, so there's always next week, right? Yeah. There'll there'll be more mushrooms. <laughs> That's <laughs> there's right. always more. <laughs> During this humidity and heat wave due to the tropical storms, definitely. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I think we're and... going to have to dry out for a while after this deluge that we're going to get tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, Jersey yeah. is probably going to get really nailed. Oh, at over. least as long as it's not like Long Island, they got... <clears throat> no, like really we, we're going to get the back end of it. It's just the uh, tail end of the... Uh, but it's going to be about five inches that we should be getting around New Jersey. It's kind of difficult to say how much, you know, who's getting, who's going to get how much because the, the storm actually dispersed itself. Mm. So all these bands are traveling kind of independently. So depending on where you are, I mean, I'm supposed to get only three inches of rain here in South Jersey and Northern Jersey is supposed to get five. So I don't know. So you know, where, where are, are, are you at in uh, South Jersey? I'm in the uh, Cherry Hill area. Oh, I'm in Voorhees. I'm yeah, I'm very close. Yeah. Yeah. So very I'm close. right here. I'm in Sturbridge Lakes. What's that? I'm in Sturbridge Lakes, right across the new hospital. Oh, um, I'm actually in the, in Maple Shade or or, Maple or Shade. edge of it. So yeah, off seventy three. So do you know where uh, the Black Run Preserve is? Which one? Black Run Preserve. Black Run. I think I heard of the name, but I've never been there. It's on, on Kittle Run Road in um, Evesham. Uh, it's worthwhile to go walk there. There's, it's it's uh, incredible the amount of mushrooms out there. Really? Let's yep. see. Um, you're Black saying Run Black Preserve. Run Preserve. It's Black. very accessible. Yeah, Kettle Run, Evesham. Yep. Township. And the Black Run Preserve. Yep, let's see. It's. Nice trails. Um, I see. Ah, okay. So it's south of Marlton. Yep. Um, it, uh, yeah. A, a lot of various um, habitat. So uh, from swampland to, you know, everything in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just a few miles away. I've never even you know, even seen it, you know. So, okay. And I see it's not very big, so you will not get lost there. Nope, you won't. And there's, there's maps. And uh, I tell you, uh, even 
and I found actually right next to one of the trails a whole bunch of uh, big red reishi growing. Yes, so um, you know what you should do since you are um, an NGMA member, you should propose that uh, location for a foray. You know, suggested to Nina Burkhard if she actually is still on the uh, on our forum. Um, yeah, I don't yeah. think she is. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it would be. I mean, we always look uh, for new locations because we get tired of the old ones and. Uh, there are other places to look at uh, and explore. So that seems like a very reasonable uh, location for a full foray. Because yeah, it's, it's, from, it's from grasslands to swamp in that small area. Mm. And in between, the serious forest, um, everything in between. Okay. Hey, P.S. <clears throat> um, since we're not having a foray this weekend, I was thinking about um, trying to coordinate a few people to get together if anybody's interested. Uh, this weekend, you say? Um, yeah, I was thinking about, um, yeah, this weekend since we don't have a foray. Well, Sunday probably would be, be a better day because everything would be soggy from the tropical storm. All right. Well, I don't know. I'll think about it and um, maybe send send out an email. To Just remember, this weekend is also a holy weekend for certain <laughs> groups because of Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, that's, well, I'm just kind of inviting correct. the people that I know who probably don't. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I'm actually Jewish, but I don't celebrate any holidays. So same here ish. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Rosh Hashanah is a holiday that surrounds eating sweets. So I don't see any reason not to celebrate it. Even if you're not Jewish. Well, like I said, I'm not religious. You know, I'm just uh, genetically I'm Jewish, but, uh, you know, spiritually I'm. <laughs> yeah, it's something to do with growing up in, in the Soviet Union, I'm afraid. Yeah. Well, spiritually, I'm addicted to sugar. So. <laughs> well, so am I. <laughs> um, yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. Have a good sure. night and I'll send you an email. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Get get your email off to a few folks, and um, you know how. Wh wh where are you planning to have that um, foray? Somewhere in your, your neck of the woods, or? I'm pretty open, um, Lila. I was curious if you were interested, and in, I figured we could kind of get a consensus or something. Yeah, I'm open. I mean, I'm happy to show you guys Voorhees or um, whatever. Yeah, I would love to, but. Dave finally quit his crappy weekend job, so we're <laughs> we're tied up this Aww. weekend. Oh. Lila, you, you're busy all the time. I know it's terrible being retired. <laughs> no, uh, Lauren, okay. I've I've posted my email address. I'm interested. Okay. All right. I mean, sure. I mean, Warhees is about seventy miles from me, um, roughly. I would say, yeah. Well, maybe we could pick something in between or something. Whatever. Whatever. No, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's like I said, it's fine. It's not terribly far away. I think I can get there within an hour and a half. So, um, so but it's, it's a big place and I think it's going to get a lot of rain. So, um, um, yeah, um, the trails do get muddy, just FYI, like very muddy. Uh oh, no. Uh -oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's, that's uh, not a good idea then. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I mean, it's not too muddy to walk through. It's just you don't want to wear, like, you know, your blue suede shoes. <laughs> Some people yeah. pay extra for a mud bath, so. Yeah. I mean, I can wear my old the beat up hiking boots that need some repair. You know, I have to tape them up because the uh, the soles are falling off from the tips from the from the from the toe area. But uh, those will be perfect for that mud bath. Okay. Because I'm well, about to throw them out anyway. Okay. All right. All right. Good night, everybody. Lots of pictures. All right. Let me know when you're available again. Yeah, it'll be mid mid month, unfortunately. Ah. Yeah. That's that, that's terrible, Lila. You missed this great foray at Stokes. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would have learned a lot about bolides because I think we had over 30 species. I know, Lauren was telling me, it was the master class.
Yep. That was my best mushroom experience was with King Bullet. What? I missed them so much. Oh, there were no kings at Stokes. Oh, where I was, there were <laughs> nests. But as I said, that was my lifetime's one true singularity mushroom experience. I discovered nests of King Bullet. Did you, how did you know that that's what they were? Exactly. Because I had a guide with me. Okay. Yep. And I just have, like, I alone just happened to, with, I guess, with my attention deficit disorder brain, I was focusing on so many things around me. I looked up to my right, and there was this weird thing I saw looks like a bunch of black dome caps and i was like okay i'm gonna check that out i hobbled up and dug one up brought it down and well i started to get showered by hugs from the guy because apparently i'm now his new favorite what um county was this in and what this year was in a county this was in colorado oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, th this was this forget was, about Colorado. Who cares about Colorado? Yeah, you find them here, and then you let us know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, so, if I could find them here, I would definitely be the king of the campus. And that that's that's, I guess, my new task now. I'm wait, gonna have do you have to, pictures? Can you show them next week? I will have to dig them up, but hopefully, you will not recognize me at all because my hair was so luxurious and long past my shoulder blades that is one my true regret <laughs> cutting <Okay>. that <laughs> all right oh. well i want to see those mushrooms i'll see if i can find them cool excellent have a great weekend have a great holiday thanks you too thank you thank you bye-bye everyone good night bye. take care